What's happening, weirdos? This is the return of my dear friend, the lovely Kyle Kinane, who I have known for well over a decade. He is hilarious. He has a new special called Dirt Nap, which is in, uh, which is available, which is available in its entirety on YouTube.com. So check that out. He is so funny. He is so wonderful. And I enjoyed this chat even more than the first time he was on, which was about 10 years ago, my goodness. So I'm so glad Kyle is back. Hope to see you guys out on the road. I am touring. Kyle is also touring. Go to kylekinane.com for his tour dates. If you'd like to see me, I'm going to be in Madison uh, this weekend, followed by Pittsburgh, Buffalo, New York, Milwaukee, and then Denver. All of those are available at PeteHolmes.com. And in the meantime, enjoy this chat with the wonderful, the hilarious, the one-of-a-kind, Kyle Kinane. Get into it. I saw the guy named Joe, who is now in a very famous band called Rise Against, but as a, it was in bands I saw as a teenager, and we know each other. And I was like, wait a minute, what? Like, we like, I'd like. Go wait, to is he a, a Chicago guy? Yeah. Randomly I'm waiting for here, this to become Chicago. Randomly here on the street in Los Feliz, talking about like, like, oh yeah, we know each other from punk rock. And I was like, isn't it sad? Steve Albini died today. So who's Steve Albini? That will get your ass kicked in Chicago. I don't, but I don't live in Chicago. <laughs> he's uh, he's like a very yeah I know it doesn't matter anymore. He's a very famous producer, like famous like producer. punk producer, like any but Nirvana and all these bands. And Which Nirvana very, record? I don't know. I'm not a I don't huge Nirvana fan. I, I'm not a huge now Nirvana we're both fan. in trouble. Yeah, huge producer. Are we rolling? Is it a rolling start? Yeah, but we can start when like okay. we can cut that out. If what you are want. these? Do I have one of these? Yeah, that's for you. Do you want a cold one? Nice. My, how the definition of cold one has changed. <laughs> you want a cold one? Curious. A wheatgrass shot. Okay. Oh, it's not wheatgrass. It's matcha. It's called Magic Mind. Don't, You'll like it. Don't Drink tell it. me. Oh, this is the stuff you're, the you're stuff moving. I'm always, this is the stuff you're, you're, you're plugging. What's the word? What's the what's the Yiddish word? I looked at Katie. Uh, Schlep, not schleppen. Hawking. Hawking mm -hmm. isn't Yiddish, but it's the word I was thinking of. I'm always hawking my wares. There you go. What's this gonna do? Help you focus. Make you feel good? Make you feel real good? <laughs> Already there, dude. Remember that Bronger bit? Is there any ter more terrifying question than do you party? <laughs> do you party? What do you, you party? Do you shoot moose? <laughs> I was just talking to him the other day about like, oh, man, oh. you got to get silly Bronger, but his bit about a savory Willy Wonka. <laughs> I don't know it. It's just, it's just like, what if Willy Wonka, instead of sweets, it was all savory flavors, and it was the dumbest, best thing I've heard. <laughs> I've said it a Welcome, million. how do you do? Let's take a trip down my river of stew. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. That is, that is A-plus Bronger stuff right there. Just being a weirdo. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, he's the best. You know, it's funny that you mentioned Cold One. I'm so happy to see you. The new special, mm -hmm. Dirt Nap. Yes. Is available. Dirt Nap. Will be available. No, it's out. It's out? It's out. Oh, you could have just... I'm sorry. I said, send me the link. I thought I'm not going to make out. you watch the YouTube video that makes it makes my already bloated special 45 minutes longer with ads. Oh, does it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it might be ads for I, I Magic got... Mind, so you'd, you'd be excited. <laughs> you see yourself telling, reminding you to drink your stuff. I, I, that has happened to me. <laughs> has it? I've had an ad that I'm in show up in my own feed, and I, I'm like, get this fucking guy out of here. I'm too close to the machinery. <laughs> Yeah, I fell inside. I fell inside I'm the well. I'm stuck in the gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, where where was I going with that though? Well, you were talking about my new special. Yeah, your new special being wonderful. Oh, I and looked, you sang cold one, and, and, and really how happy I am that you're here and happy to see you, man. Yeah, what's up? Look at this, man. Home. I like where we're at here. This is the uh, this is the new studio. Yeah, you did it back <sighs> when it was at Meltdown. Back when. Uh, Meltdown was a structure, a it's familiar structure. No, I condo. have a theory about Los Angeles having been gone and come back. I think every time somebody doesn't pick up dog shit on the sidewalk, new unaffordable housing gets built. It's like it's the it's the, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Los Angeles version. <laughs> come down my river of stew. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is that observation uh, did I just, is as good. Did I just step in some French bulldog shit? I bet that's a condo going up over there. I bet that's a condo being built on something I used to cherish. Yeah. Yeah, but don't a lot of them, I don't keep tabs on L.A. real estate, mm -hmm. but I always, 
get rumblings. Of, oh, it's not selling. That one's not selling or whatever. I don't of course, know. Who can afford any? Yeah, of that's it. what I'm saying. So who are they for? If for the tax write-off for the developers? Oh, no. What a somber... I think, yeah, I think it's uh, hell. Yeah. <laughs> I have a fondness for this city. Yeah. Uh, but you live in... Portland. Are a lot of people just kind of asking about that? Because I am curious about your move and how you're finding it. And they're not it. I mean, I think it's a lot of people going, oh, you did it. Yeah. You left. And I talked to... I was at the store last night, and I saw Nikki Glazer, and she lives in St. Louis. And I saw somebody else, Heather, I forget her name, but she's a part of the festival that's going on. She's like, oh, yeah, I just moved back to Atlanta. Hmm. Like, everybody kind of. Yeah. It's like, oh, I could do everything remotely. I wasn't doing showbiz shit when I was here. I wasn't auditioning or doing any of that. I was just yeah. doing spots and then oh. falling off my bike during the days. And it was great. I loved it. Yeah. Because I wasn't trying to, like, get the other stuff. My joke, which you'll, mm. you know, I live about 90 minutes north. I live in Ojai. Did you know that? No. Yeah. So I, I also have left. Really? Yeah. What's, where are we? This is Los Feliz, bro. I know. But is this? Oh, what is this, this structure? Is your outpost? This, oh, my friends rent this place. Oh. And we kept the back. Nice. Yeah. I was like, how is he 10 minutes late? He lives there. I was he never, lives across I was, the driveway. I was never late when I lived there. <laughs> okay. I was always early when I lived there. Yeah, I was like, how is he late from coming across his own driveway? No, it took me two hours to get in today because I hit a lot of traffic. But that's, ooh, I want to hear about Ojai. Well, I'll tell you just to see what it gets out of you because I'm curious about Portland. Yeah. It's Portland, right? Somebody took keeping it crispy, literally. <laughs> Not sure I understand. <laughs> so very hot up there. It's so funny. Coilies, you coilies. If I was going to describe Ojai, hot wouldn't even be in the top 10 things. But really? like you and like when I, I know you're, you're, aren't you friends with Marin? He goes, too dry yeah. up there. Too dry. <laughs> like there's, there's this way that certain people see it. I thought it was, I, 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 it's, it I know it's not toasted. desert, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's the high country, right? It is hotter than uh, Ventura. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's further from the ocean. It doesn't burn down all the time? It burns down, you know, every six years or so. There might be a, a scare. Controlled, controlled, a controlled. A contr it's a controlled, controlled burn. burn for it's my controlled burn for my insurance company. It's a controlled burn. <laughs> yeah, we start. <laughs> this house is a dump, and I need the money. It's a controlled burn. That's what people never tell. <laughs> Sir, you. that's called arson. Well, I do you see it? You know, well, tomato controlled tomato. burn. I'm controlling yeah. the burn. Yeah, <laughs> I want my house to burn down. Tomato, tomato. But I, I really, my, one of the jokes I make is move to Los Angeles audition for things over Zoom and shoot them in Vancouver. That, yeah. That's that's my joke about living in L.A. <clears throat> yeah. And since we've gotten out, we've gotten out, I also like L.A., but since we've left, it's like, I always say to Val, I'm like, why were we, why did we feel like we had to sleep there? Is it, yeah, is it worse <laughs> or was it Stockholm Syndrome the whole time? When I lived here? When any of us lived here. Like, no, no, it's not good. No, it's... No, it's good. It's nice. Basically, no. Joe DeRosa. No, it's good. No, it's, it's nice. Good. Yeah. Little burr. No, no like, it's good. Like, I, know, good. I know the homeless people. I know them. <laughs> like, I'm good with them on my block. Well, it's funny. Unhoused uh, crisis noted with compassion. One of the reasons it got a little too hairy was our this street turned into like a real uh, town. It was a village. It was a, a shanty. Can you say shanty town? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hooverville. Was that? Can we say that? I think so. <laughs> and not to say, <laughs> well, yeah. it was just getting kind of, kind of dot. Like there were a couple moments with Val and with my daughter that were like leaning violent, scary. And we were like, I think we're going to leave. And yeah. then we did leave renting. And then we were like, just like a million people were like, we're just going to stay. What was your yeah. journey to Portlandia? We, uh, the old, uh, Pandiggle happened and we got a chance to. <laughs> Diggle. Everybody had a cute name for it, right? I, I like to call it the plandemic and don't explain. Just say it like <laughs> pandemic. during the pandemic. I had plans and I was waiting yeah, yeah, yeah. for a global collapse to institute them. Controlled burn. It's <laughs> uh, the name of my new special, Controlled Burn. It's, Controlled. All, crowd, it's all crowd work, Controlled Burn. That's Can you handle it? A little too right. <laughs> Somebody's Cal already, Cal Cain, somebody's already burn. releasing that. That's Colin already. Colin Kane, Controlled Burn. <laughs> Cal Cal That's a great Colin Kane record. Oh, is he still I don't think part so. of the world? 
I've always uh, Colin's a very sweet guy, so I don't want to, you know. But I'm interested in him. Uh, yeah, he's well. There's a lot of characters in this business, but uh, that's a great to, way to put it. There's to, a lot of characters. I think wasn't it a TBS slogan? I don't know. Everything characters welcome. Everything's I think a slogan. Think of the USA <laughs> Network. <laughs> Whatever, man. Everything's marketing. It's all co-opted. Yeah, how curmudgeonly are we, Kyle? What? How are we? What now? Are you, how curmudgeonly are you? Are you not more at all? <laughs> not at all. I don't know why I got. I told Shane Torres when I was talking to Shane Torres. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I'm thriving, and he couldn't stop laughing. Oh, really? Well, so I, I haven't cut my hair, so I look like this right now. So it's hard to be like. I just feel like I'm thriving. Right now. <laughs> and he got, he got real. He's like, you should see yourself when you say that. You should look at your face when you say that. I only ask that because we already talked about how sad mm -hmm. LA architecture is in condominiums and then everything's yeah. marketing and falling yeah. into oh, the yeah, gears no, uh, of it, our own system. It's the easiest thing to get laughs out of is like I bitching see. about stuff. I see. But, but you're feeling <laughs> great. That's great. Like the best ever. The best ever. So yeah. tell me about the movie. You were saying we. We yeah, me and the missus, as we were talking about, we don't know what Katie, we don't know what to call our partners of long time without being married. I say the missus. Yeah, that's nice. Which makes me feel like I'm in the American Gothic painting. <laughs> I will say every time, I've had this happen a million times, because the brain does want to know what are we dealing with. That's yeah. why we invited invented marriage. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, okay, you guys are serious, and we like categories. Yeah. So whenever a guy says- Oh, I thought says, it was just to control a woman. <laughs> well, that too. Because otherwise, a they're a witch. <laughs> I thought that's why it existed. Not curmudgeonly? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just spitting facts, dog. <laughs> I'll be ready. Controlled burn. Spitting facts. <laughs> so going back, whenever a guy says my partner, mm. I assume he means his gay partner, his male partner. Yeah. And then like three minutes later, he says Michelle. And I'm just like, I, I thought there was a time when partner was what you said if you meant your same sex partner. And I feel like partner is now on the table for you. It's very European. Yeah, it does feel kind of European. Uh, I don't, without sounding curmudgeon, I do think there is You're an amount of- uh, No, but I don't, I don't feel that way. But there are <laughs> amount of, like, th we're using language to put Band-Aids on real issues. Like, I know it's houseless instead of homeless, but like, congratulate. So you ignored a houseless person on the off ramp right, today instead right, of a homeless right. person. Do right. you, you feel better. No, you're You feel right. better. You use that term, but you did nothing for the cause. Right. So I'm not going to get into the semantics of this shit. Yeah. You know- my partner. Oh, okay. Yeah. That could mean whatever. And also, how badly do I need the information? Right. Right, right, right. So you're you you're with somebody. So yeah, all yeah. I know is you're not single, and yeah. I'm not going to try and set you up. Not that way in the first place. <laughs> but, but I, yeah. You I'm, and the missus. I am, yeah. I'm 47. We're adults. Uh, and you've been together. Katie, I were talking like girlfriend or boyfriend sounds a bit immature for the age and how long we've been together uh. for. It doesn't like, give it its due. No, it's 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 earned more. Yeah. I'm not going to be one of these. It's my old lady. It's my chick. Like I'm not that guy. Yeah. So I think Mrs. is dignified. It's a little old fashioned. I think it shows respect. Indicates what type of orientation is happening. Yeah. Uh, it's also uh, going. It's a little bit like when Prince was the symbol, but the symbol meant son of the king, because Mrs. does mean a married woman. Right? Yeah. But it's so old fashioned, nobody's really sure because nobody that's You're actually right. married would call them the missus. They'd You're call absolutely them the wife. right. It's absolutely right. I think yeah. you found a brilliant way in. How long have you been together? 10, 10 years. And why no marriage? Is it a, a, an ideological it's revolt? Just, or is it just not, not like some happened? big step? It's like, I just don't see the need for it. Unless we're talking healthcare. And taxes. Because, yeah. Unless we're talking and hospital visits. Horseshit institutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we are a yeah. part of. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, I'm like, man, I'm not really. But like, why not? I, I'm, I'm really just curious because you're. We've just, a, we a just been together guy. and it's just. You, I, both of us kind of didn't see that being a. No courthouse, though? No. Tax break. How much of a tax break? A good tax break to incentivize you to have children. That's how that Yeah, goes. we're not doing that either. So. No, I know, but you'd still get the tax break. Yeah, but then... And then if one of you was in the hospital, God forbid, but you'd be able to visit them. Now well, you're... Finally a break. You're, uh, a, no. you're an indie movie cliche where you're like, I'm a partner uh, for 10 years. Uh, well, That's my well, missus. It was funny yeah. because there's a moment of like needing... There was possible like insurance concern and, uh, you know, with SAG... I'm like, okay, well, I'll see. 
and like maybe we'll have to get married like oh now that doesn't work anymore right because you know marriage is legal for everybody yeah i can't get domestic partner benefits Uh, i'm like oh the fucking gays ruined it (laughs) and for the first time i can say that with true god marriage for them and for you it's not out of hate it's just like oh you fucked up domestic partnership (laughs) now i can't get insurance for my old lady (laughs) that is really funny because the queers had to come in and take it but then like doing it and just of course as it's deserved but like yeah there's no now I i have to get married to get health insurance like oh Right, that's the other re- is because you can claim them mm-hmm. on your health insurance. So you wouldn't do it just helpless. I hope all your stylish weddings were worth it. Chocolate fountains. Oh God! I went to a beach one. It was fabulous. <laughs> You're reminding me. In my, whenever I see you, I think of my Chicago years, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I was at the elevated, and I thought this was the edgiest bit. And I was talking about how I worked with a lot of black women. Even saying mm-hmm. that was like, I got sweaty. Yeah. It was true. I worked yeah. at 150 South Michigan, the, Ban- the Bannigans, mm-hmm. where Josh Cheney also worked briefly. Across from the Art Institute. That's right. Yes. Where they shot Spider-Man. <laughs> it's now a Walgreens. They shot Spider-Man. The great power, great responsibility is supposed to be in New York, but it's actually the Art Institute oh. of Chicago. Fun fact. But I worked with all these yeah. black women that would go, okay, mm-hmm. and I loved it. You'd be like, She's wearing a dress like that, and she's got a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And someone would just go, okay. And mm-hmm. I loved it. So I had a bit about how I wanted to co-opt it. It was a long time ago <laughs> before like appropriation was kind of an issue. And then the Can't say thing, anything anymore. <laughs> the woke left. Yeah. But I had a bit where I, the same bit goes, and uh, I'm a straight man, but sometimes mm-hmm. something isn't great. It's not fantastic. It is fabulous. And you're absolutely right. When you said that, it gave me an image of the of the of the wedding. Yeah, we've kind of over rotated acceptance into co opting, and it's like, ugh. yeah, I I mean, over rotated. That's nice. I had, I mean, one of my first jokes, I said the n word in it. And oh, it really? Was Dwayne, it was like it was at Lincoln or uh, uh, Red Lion, and Dwayne Kennedy's like, that joke's really funny. You should come back next week. <laughs> like I did it at my first open mic. And Dwayne Kennedy, who's a black comic, yeah. said he loved it. But but, but it's I, I keep you know like there's the whole you can't say anything cancel. It's like you can if you're good. Who made that point? Robin Tran was like, you can't say anything anymore. Cut to Succession winning every award, <laughs> and every other joke is an yeah. incest sexual assault joke. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, you can still say whatever you want if if you're good. And uh, I mean, but also I'm like, are we making a straw man about the? Who is saying you can't say anything anymore? Is no, it just I, I people agree. comment on it's not comedians, it's people on the internet yeah. talking about it. Like, oh well, you're just uh, commenting on Reddit. You're it's not confusing <laughs> these comments with reality. Yeah. So am I making a, a fake enemy? Yes. Yeah. And I think it's because we perversely kind of love it. You but, gotta have something. Yeah, that's what that's I mean. a, yeah, if you have no opposition, what's what's your like that's the I I'm really having fun trying to write comedy out of a place of appreciation and trying to understand things Mm. as opposed to, I'm just not attracted to comedy. That's like, let me tell you how the world works. Mm. Let me tell you what's screwed up today. Why are you going to tell me you're, you're 27 and you've been a millionaire comedian for the past eight years. Yeah. Why do you know how the world works at all? That's another great Neil Brennan bit. It's like, why are we listening? They're mad about what Dave said about trans people. He's like, why are we even letting comedians or who is going to the comedians like, oh, there's this thing called transgender. What if the clowns said I've, <laughs> I was trying to what get if the uh, clowns. Yeah. It's the same point. Why are we going to Brad Pitt for how he votes? Yeah. Like this dude has never sat on a toilet that wasn't also a bidet. That <laughs> I live that way also now. <laughs> That is part of my set now. Like, you want to make America great again? Get a bidet. Your filthy ass is why we're going to be a third world country. That is true. Get it together. That's I true. Stand by it. <laughs> but but, but just uh, I would get so upset, and it's going to have like just whenever it was the the celebrities telling me to vote, it's just vote. Just tell me for who. You, I know who you want me to vote for. Don't do this. It's just important that everybody gets out and vote. Because that's not what you mean. I yeah. know who you want me to vote for. Be honest. Stop telling me it's important that everybody just votes. You want me to vote for a candidate. Right. Be honest about that. Yeah. Stop telling right. me 
It's well, just important to participate. You're making not, this ad because you want me to vote left. That's why. Yeah, and the, and the rally and the concert isn't in a red state, like a decidedly red state. Yeah. Like, they're not going there. They're going to swing states that could yeah. swing their way. You're absolutely right. Yeah. This Sarah Silverman telling me to vote ad isn't coming on during Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's it's uh, it's on during Broad City. I know who you want me to vote for. Just tell me. Just support. Just in, just endorse the candidate. <laughs> oh, good. This ad break during Tucker Carlson. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey guys, it's Sarah. It's just important that you participate in the civic process. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here with that. I know. I mean, that's everything. <laughs> is that what you like about mm -hmm. comedy? It, it's what I like about comedy, so it's sort of a leading question, is I like that comedy can, right or wrong, perfect or imperfect is actually better. You can kind of just say the thing. You're allowed to say the thing. Yeah. You can say, and, and if, if the public opinion is not uh, the same, you're going to get your ass handed to you. Yeah. I love, I mean... I don't know how much you're on the road or what you're splitting with. Do you do sets anymore? Or is it just you like, like you just work like I'm working sets? every weekend. And so I got an hour, you know, show to like fit new stuff in and figure it out. But you're also home field advantage when you're playing to people that bought tickets to see you versus I hear you. I can just go to Portland. Like Portland's great. There's a little bit of like, ooh, Kyle's on the show. But then I'll get my ass handed to me. Yeah. And that I love it. If you stink. Yeah. Are you one of those guys that likes doing bad? Or like no, the but I like knowing that this yeah. st I, that I always have to grow and figure something out. No, I know what you mean. There is an epidemic, epidemic's generous, but there's a issue, a problem, I would say with comedy mm -hmm. going on right now, which is a lot of hours that were written seemingly exclusively for thousands of your fans. And that that's a risk, that's a tricky pickle. I just did yeah. a, a show which was awesome and it was a thousand people and I loved it. And I was doing so much better than I'm used to doing because I'm, I'm used yeah. to doing smaller venues. And I was like, oh, imagine if it was three times this many people and they all love me, what kind of act does that produce? So I'm with you. I, I, I go by the store and just do a regular set. Yeah. And you know what happens is you go, oh, that sort of charming personality driven slice of life anecdote mm -hmm. that I've been murdering with isn't really funny to people who just think you're a comedian. <laughs> no, it's 11 o'clock on a Tuesday, and nobody in here gives a shit who I am. Yeah. I need to write some jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good joke, oh, too. Yeah. <clears throat> but then you see the people that are person, but they're like, that's a, there's fandom now. Comedy is, I don't know if it's doing great or if it's so bloated. Like, I look at it, it's like hair metal mm. in the, and it's 1990. Yeah. And there are bands you've never heard of getting you know huge, huge record deals yeah, yeah yeah and my man nirvana nirvana is around the corner yeah so i yeah. know i know you're playing drums and uh bang tango right now right but uh you might want to learn learn how to produce <laughs> or yeah, some, yeah. find some behind the scenes stuff because yeah. this is gonna this is gonna pop i wonder controlled burn will not be around in 1992 <laughs> controlled burn man for its time it was edgy but it didn't age well and then it will be uh, ironically the soundtrack to uh peacekeeper like the, the i don't know if you watch that show but they put in all this hair metal and it's like this now huge, i'm gonna watch it <laughs> it's like this joke now but it's also me. like you enjoy it you're like this is good i get it but like that's, it's a, ironic. that's a secret that was my introduction to music so i'm always well, hair metal. that's why i can drop the the sad b bands that went away yeah I'm like, i was listening to danger danger at the time bullet boys i hope they're doing well <laughs> like i know yeah i mean i i could go both ways i do feel like we're on the precipice of something. Do you spend a lot of time thinking about how tech is changing and AI and all that? I don't think I, no, I don't. You don't think stand up is going to be challenged by it? Do you? You seem like you might be in the woods on a typewriter writing about such things. <laughs> More or less. I mean, that was the beginning of the last special like during the pandemic. I'm like, oh, this isn't comedy. I've just been writing manifestos <laughs> that I'm trying to tag punchlines at the end so it doesn't sound like yeah. I'm about to no. <laughs> storm a government office. <laughs> I relate. I relate. Um, this isn't a bomb. I'm just returning shit to Amazon. Calm down. I just haven't shaved in a while. Do you get those looks? <laughs> I would. There was... I didn't shave or cut my hair or anything, I think, for a year at the beginning of pandemic. And it was 
Because Rachel, I'd be like, you got to tell me if you can't take it. She's like, I don't know. It just looks crazy. I'm into it. I'm like, all right. So we're both just mating <laughs> eagles plummeting towards the earth during this. And uh, there's a... <laughs> Your partner was into it. I couldn't. I couldn't. That makes me so yeah, happy. I couldn't eat soup without like... <laughs> a, like the mask, the mask helped. I needed a full guard when eating soup because it just looked like... Like a new kitten getting its first bowl of milk. <laughs> <laughs> go eat eat facing the wall when we go out so nobody could witness it. Oh my god. So we have a lot going. Let's go back. <laughs> let's go back. Why to do you think AI is gonna be a channel other than it's gonna take over the world? Well, I, you I know, I could talk about it both ways. I could I could say I think there's a very good possibility that there will be more of a demand for the human experience to be together, live comedy show, comedian who's actually here, who's actually a person yeah. talking to you. I think that's actually what's gonna happen. That's why I'm not panicked. Yeah. What I do think will change is things like, I think my daughter will think it's hilarious that you and I used to watch a public, uh, a, um, a current event, mm -hmm. and then would go, I wonder what John Stewart's going to say about that tomorrow. Yeah. Meaning there'll be that kind of comedy being generated in real time. The idea of going like what what are they going to say about that on SNL will be like crazy because I think there's a certain type of comedy it won't be as good I don't think potentially that will be generated in real time. It'll be very black mirror. It'll be fed like the, While the, it's happening. the newspaper press goes into the shredder immediately. <laughs> like it just gets yeah, turns into what it needs. Yeah. Meaning I think you'll have an AI friend who's very funny who will watch the news with you and will pepper in jokes and you won't have to wait for Alec Baldwin to be like my fellow Americans, like that'll be absurd. And it'll be like bloodletting or leeching. It'll just be like, how quaint that they used to put on a little play every Saturday. Oh, it's the whole. Uh, it's the waiting whole, and waiting for human beings. Cars to used think to be for rich people and horses used to be how you got around. And now cars are for poor people and horses are for rich people kind of flip. Wow. I like that. Yeah. I, the, I was working on a very long time about how rich people and very rich people and very poor people have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. They're both in nature a lot. <laughs> they both hoard what little money, what money they have. That's really funny. They, they both they hoard. They're not generous with what they have. They don't share. <laughs> yeah. And then the one that always killed me, but it never worked. This bit never worked. Is I go. They both own more than one car. Like the very poor people <laughs> yeah. I know have like four cars. Oh. There's always one busted up in the driveway. Well, some, yeah, but the you know four I mean? work for the rich person. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but they drive them the same. Yeah, <laughs> they're not using them. Oil change. How many times is Jay Leno like? I think I'll take the Phantom out today. Oh, like it God. doesn't. <laughs> like it's not happening. I, I, I was doing that. <laughs> I, I, it, speaking of jokes that wouldn't work, I was talking about like sneaker culture, like how I'm not. I can't. I, it's such a thing now, and I've just, you see like people with like a bunch of shoes. I'm like, oh, you're like if Jay Leno was poor. That's so funny. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can't have a you got. But I see the same compulsion. I think it's sad it, when I'm watching some like mm -hmm. lifestyles. And we had Gabriel Iglesias on the show. I'm not teasing Gabriel, but Gabriel yeah. Iglesias owns like 75 Volkswagen Bugs. I'm like, something went wrong like, with that's all a, of us. That's a Latino thing, though. I you, think it's think cool. So? I've I am. He gets enamored with Latino culture and like from a young age. I don't know why. Tell me. I, I just don't. I don't. I think. So Leno with all the cars is kind of stupid, but. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think. If it was Jay I, Leno. I, it's like. What? <laughs> Jaime Leno. Jaime Leno with the, with the tilde over Volkswagens. the end. Volkswagens. What does he, does he let people see the car? This is the thing. There's the opulent wealth and like uh, our. People secretly being wildly generous and they're not being loud about it because yeah. that's tacky. Like yeah. I, I read something. I don't know if it's true no, or not. I'm not counting all his money or his accounting or what he's but doing. But like, why does Alec Baldwin need to do a Capital One commercial? And then I read something secretly like, oh, he just takes all that money and gives it to the ASPCA or something. Oh, wow. So you're two days worth of work and you want to yeah. give me a million dollars and I could just alley-oop that into a cause. That's right. And you're a dick if you announce that's what you're doing. Right. Right. So you just have to take it on the chin of like, well, what more money do you need? And you're secretly just yeah. know you're set. 
and just you can't are, say it. You, oh, you're going to use me? Yeah. So you're going to give me this money and I can facilitate all these things? Right. So, and Alec Baldwin also knows, because this was in the liner notes for the record uh, Play, the Moby record. He's like, why do I give my music to Toyota for a commercial? He's like, because if I don't, they'll pay someone to make a sound alike and I won't get the $7 million that I just went and gave to a charity. Like he's, that's what he did say. He was it's nice to meet the only person who's read the liner notes of a Moby record. They're actually great liner notes. Those are life changing liner notes. Those are the first liner notes where I read a non religious person say, I love Jesus. I'm not a Christian, but like I like some of these ideas. I never heard someone say that. Only nut jobs liked Jesus. That only one. nut jobs. And Moby, Moby, who has and now Moby. animal rights and block letters tattooed on his arm. That's fair. That's fair. Hey, everybody's making wild choices these days. Good for you, Moby. Everyone's making what choices? Wild choices. <laughs> eh, I think, uh, speaking, well, we won't get into that. I'm not going to get it. I do think in the future. We're not getting into something? I think they're going to look back on how we're treating animals because of AI. They're going to look back and be like, this was the Stone Age. I, uh, I'm i mostly vegetarian, which I know is not a real thing. But yeah. I, no, I define my own parameters. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty much vegetarian. Not vegan. Yeah. But... I loved your vegan quesadilla bit. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that was, was fantastic. That was a brand new joke. That that special... That was like a... You could that tell. That was like a five-day-old joke. You were telling the things that had happened, and I could tell. I was like, these really happened. Because you kept going, this was yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. I was like, oh, these really happened. it wasn't super funny. <laughs> no, it was wasn't super funny. Yet. All of those jokes were funny. I just love starting a set with, like, it might not be the funniest thing, but like, oh, here, this puts me in the moment right now. I completely agree. But yeah, I, I'll flex on however I want to flex. I'm not going to use these parameters set up by other people to define how I'm supposed to be. Like, yeah, I... I think it's unfair how we, yeah, I, I like just the cruelty and everything. But then like, last week I had chicken wings because I wanted chicken wings more than my compassion. Well, you're going to laugh. My, le my levels change. When I said that same thing to Moby, which means I'm an imperfect vegan, yeah. he was like, don't let the pursuit of perfection, uh, what is it? Destroy uh, the, uh, destroy the perfect's good. Perfect's the enemy of good. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So even, and I said to him, I was like, you have animal rights tattooed on your neck. So I, <laughs> I was scared to say it to him. And he was like, you don't have to be perfect. In fact, you know what's been a mantra in my life is no expression of love is perfect. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't vegan for the past year, and then I went back. And some of those old arguments that I had when I was eating meat, um, I, I don't know if you call that briefly, but they, they would come back, which is like, well, I'm killing mm -hmm. microbes when I scratch my skin. There's, there's uh, squirrels getting inhaled by the almond farmers. You can max out. <clears throat> yeah, that's how, well. That how was that way. Mean? That was that way when like, well, you can't drive a car because the oil is from the dinosaurs that died. And right, it's disrespectful right. to their memories. And I, I was that dickhead before. Totally. And when I catch myself being that dickhead, I just go, "No expression of love is perfect." Yeah. That's just the game we're in. Yeah, am, it can't be perfect. Am I happy with who I am? I just to go to jokes. I have a favorite joke that I've been trying for years and it never quite clicks, but I'm like, I think you can eat chicken wings and be vegan because they're flightless birds <laughs> and you don't have to kill it. You're just unburdening it of the false hope that's attached to its torso. <laughs> and it upsets everyone a little bit. And Kyle, that's my favorite joke. I'm a vegan <laughs> and it took my breath away. <laughs> I think that is hilarious. All they're doing, they're just in the field looking at other birds like, when can we fly? Like, never. It's Don't worry about it. this bird. Now you can that fit in that jacket you like. <laughs> of the burden yeah. of it's hopeless. Your false hope. Oh, God, that is so... I actually mm. think that's an aggressively vegan joke. <laughs> I really do. Because yeah. it what what is interesting about trying to make you happy. <laughs> first of all, it's deeply funny. And it's relieving animal <laughs> suffering, which is humans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two, it's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's addressing what's happening. I know that sounds kind of light, but I think a, the one of the most offensive things about factory farms and stuff is yeah. that we're we're just completely blind to it. Like we don't talk about it, we don't address it. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about that this morning. I was like, it's funny that we even say meat. It's like you should say I eat animals. Well, why it, it's why people get grossed out about like if you're like oh I'm having beef tongue. It's because that's a part that you also have that's and right. now it's gross. But that's if you're right. like oh I'm having some beef muscle, My that would gross people out. It was Howard Kramer. I was on the road with him years ago and he's like if if these, you know, like uh, butchers or something, if it was okay, why aren't they in the middle of the city then? Right. Why are we putting these places so I, I'm obviously the farming and the thing, but yeah. like why isn't it so prevalent to just see it if right. it's okay? Right. 
Why do we keep? Why do you and not why see when them? You, kill when you a go thing to Chinatown yeah. and the ducks are in the window, that's so gross. Yeah, and it is. And that's what I had to reconcile. Like, if I can't tolerate this part of the process, I shouldn't be able to uh, r- enjoy the benefits of yeah. it. Yeah. If I can't, and I went hunting. I yeah. wound up going hunting to see if I could be a part of the whole process. Mm. How'd it go? And it's. I mean, I shot some birds and it ate those birds, and it was. It did feel better to yeah. know that, like, oh, I was here through the whole thing and got to see it through the whole thing. Yeah. And I was like, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm like, I don't, because I don't want to be privy to that process, it's easier for me to step away from it. And also, I'm not, I didn't give up, like, like choice steaks or anything. I was eating trash anyway. I was eating ground beef from Taco Bell. It's not it's like, so oh funny. God, I really what what do it's I miss? So funny. Yeah, I don't miss. <laughs> I wasn't giving up this that. Stu- this stuff they're making that's beef. fake is like you, you got me. I can't tell. I was already eating trash. You just made fake trash out of pea protein. Fine. It's all got the same amount of rat shit in it, so it's still not vegan. Thank you for high fiving me. I've yeah. just been enjoying it so hard. I was like, you got to get a high five. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. But I, I, yeah, so I, I, I'll, I can reconcile it's my own parameters. Yeah. And if yeah. once every year I want chicken wings, and they were shitty chicken wings, and then I felt bags. I'm like, these were sad birds. Yeah. And now that we're here and I'm a block away from the rustic, I'm like, I need redemption wings to make up for the bad wings, and then I'll be off for another year. <laughs> When I and was, then I'll be vegan tomorrow. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, the last time I was vegan, I would occasionally eat chicken wings when I was sad. <laughs> like, I knew I wasn't doing well if I was eating. That was my go-to. Was it you, to make you feel better? You're like, I'm already down here. I, it, again, a Chicago memory, but Kumail and I did this Dave Odd uh, gig. <laughs> I know. Isn't that, doesn't that just take you back? We did a Dave Odd gig. D- buddy, it didn't even... Like, I just look at our lives now. I would never drive two hours into fucking Iowa or whatever and do yeah. some weird roadhouse show. But I did back then. There's kind of a romance to that. But that's why. Say what? Oh, that's why. That's why. Because you were willing to do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. Because, you know, then none I of us got know. successful overnight because of TikTok. Yeah. Because you had to do those things to right. get to get experience. My to do TikTok it. was driving yeah. to fucking... <laughs> Michigan this is going to some biker game some show bar. a creep set up. Yeah. You're actively watching the venue cancel it because he's hitting on a waitress while you're that on stage. Happened? Did that happen? Th- he never ran a show longer than three months in any spot he got. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was because the shows were so terrible. Well, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> column A, column B. I bombed so hard, and Kumail and I talk about... what. Well, yeah, we talk about this all the time. I wouldn't say that's true, but you get it. <laughs> I bombed so hard Kumail smoked at the time that I bummed a cigarette from him <laughs> because I wanted part of me to die. Yeah. Like, that's how I felt. I was like, I know this is bad for me. That's actually what I want. That's yeah. how chicken wings were for me. I will punish myself. I will punish myself. This episode is brought to us by our friends at Tushy. Val and I absolutely love our Tushy bidet. It is a game changer. Why in 2024 are you still using toilet paper to clean your butt after a deuce? If you had shit on your hand, would you wipe it with a piece of paper and then be like, oh good, my hand is clean. No, no, no more concerns regarding my shit hand. No, of course not. You need water, you need pressure. That's how you get clean. So just like power blasting dry leaves out of your driveway with a high powered hose, a Tushy bidet uses a precise yet gentle yet cleaning stream of clean water to get your butt tip top, especially now in the sticky summer season. You need to up your number two game with Tushy. Tushy is easy, it's fast, and once you try it, you will never go back. I thought it would feel weird, to be honest, using a bidet, and I thought it would have a hard time finding the the bullseye, but nope. It feels A-OK, A A stands for ass, and finds the target first try. Bam! It makes pooping any other way feel primitive, backwards, and stone age. This is like a midday shower after every single poop, which is, you know, it's what God intended. So they have the best, they have lots of different kinds of the best bidets, the classic permanent bidet that attaches to your existing toilet, which is what we have. And we just got the Tushy Travel, which is finally here, amazing, portable, 
and travels with you discreetly. Tushy bidets are easy to install, takes less than 10 minutes, anyone can do it, and those 10 minutes will change your life. Get a real clean bottom and help keep away hemorrhoids, UTIs, yeast infections, and step your butt into the future with a science fiction level of clean with Tushy. Just sit down, relax, you turn the knob to a spray, a precise stream of fresh water at your butt, and every Hello Tushy Every hello tushy bidet, sorry, comes with a 30-day hassle-free return and a 12-month warranty. So stay shower fresh all summer long and join the 2 million butts who have already switched to tushy. For a limited time, our listeners get 10% off their first bidet when you use code WEIRD at checkout. That's 10% off your first bidet at hello tushy. H-E-L-L-O-T-U-S-H-Y dot com with promo code WEIRD. 10% off a clean butt. I mean, get into it. We are also brought to us by our friends at Exploding Kittens. Val and I, as parents, are always looking to have fun with our child and for a fun and interesting way to get our daughter to sit at the dining room table and have dinner in one uh, concentrated burst. So if you want to spend quality screen-free time with your kids and they're really too young to appreciate your stand-up or maybe the teachings of Ram Dass, try Kitten Games, a line of games made especially for kids for the people behind the best-selling game, Exploding Kittens. And I can say firsthand, these games are simple to learn and fun to play, even if you're a grown-up. Our favorite is the best worst ice cream, but we also love My Parents Might Be Martians. You can tell that these games were developed with kids. That means a four-year-old and her dad made these games together. They're kid-tested and kid-approved. That's not just a slogan. That's legit what's going on here. And you can tell. Leela locks in when she's making these disgusting ice cream flavors, which actually has kind of like a sleeper message about pattern recognition, critical thinking strategy, and also kind of like an anti-gambling message, which I like. Or maybe it's very, very fun. And My Parents Might Be Martians, which is a little bit like a $100,000 pyramid, but for kids, it is so fun, it is so easy, and it gets us off our screens and at the table together. So go to explodingkittens.com and use promo code WEIRD to get 25% off your purchase. Your kids aren't going to be kids forever. There's no time for boring games. So go to Kitten Games. Get into it. That's explodingkittens.com. Promo code WEIRD. Support the show. Support screen-free family time. Or give it as a gift to someone you know that just had a baby. Get into it. Yeah. Do you still smoke? No. What do, yeah, where are you at? Because when I think of Kyle, and I say this for the fun of it, and you're free yeah. to be your own parameters, as, as you've been saying. Yeah. I love The Kyle I know is shirtless, doing shots of well whiskey. Burt Kreischer before he was Burt Kreischer. Stop. <laughs> you are like the crank brain I was, I was the machine. that came out of I was of the machine Bert when we were acoustic, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you were like... It's Kreischer unplugged. You're the little guy inside of Bert's belly, like Krang Brain <laughs> operates the Krang robot. But you came out. I, I th- yeah, I think I realized, well, earlier, I mean, it's like 10 or so years ago, I think when I finally got to like be doing comedy full time, it took me too long to realize people were laughing at me and not with me when I was just being drunk at shows mm. and being... Like, oh, everybody, and just like, just why you become a comedian. Like, oh, I'm the funniest. Like, no, you're the loudest. Mm. You're the funniest because you're not letting anybody else have a chance to speak. So, wow. oh, you got a microphone now. Calm down. But that's interesting. I, I like your realization. I think that's healthy and good. Mm-hmm. My uh, interpretation of you, even though I think you're mm-hmm. right, but as a fan, when I was 22, I just thought it was the coolest. So we were, it wasn't all like, look at this idiot. You know what I mean? If I somebody think it was, was feeling I think that it was way? more when I got out here. Oh, really? And I was still continuing to be that guy. Oh, okay. And it wasn't... Oh, okay. You didn't have the scene to bolster you up. Like, yeah, we were all up each other's ass. Yeah. A lot. And really, I think, supported... Um, and we also did a lot of shit talking, but we also, right. I think, supported each other. I think so. And I got out here and, like, oh, that doesn't fly anymore. There are no bar heroes in L.A. You know, it's not no, that kind of nobody, culture. And, and, and for, yeah, because you moved here to make it, not to just be yeah. a drunken yeah. uh, micro-celebrity right. Right. at an open mic. Right. It's, it, it did become, it was like this prison mentality 
in a sense where like Chicago had these gangs of like that guy came from improv. He's just up there just talking about whatever. Fuck that. We write jokes. We're stand ups. And it's like when you come out of like like oh the, the the you know the 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 Aryan Brotherhood and the Crips all get along in prison because the rules are different. I got here I'm like, wait a minute, this show's got improv and sketch and stand up. Man, what are you even doing? You're, You're like right. because we're all here to Make succeed. It. Yeah. These little squabbles are so pointless. You're so right. And so to come out here and be like, I'm going to be the drunkest guy on the show. People are like, well, good luck. I am working three jobs just to stay alive and yes. doing auditions to succeed. So yeah. good luck with that drunk route you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. And I did, look, not to disparage it, but I noticed a lot. It's the cliche. You watch the fucking... Pearl Jam doc and there's always mm. mother love bone and there's always some guy who was better than all of them. I, I'm not I'm not even trying to preach here. I'm just saying like alcohol and drugs eats up a lot of the best. And and it's also why did those people turn to alcohol and drugs? Because is it a lot of self-doubt and you look mm. at the people? Hustle will beat out talent a hundred percent of the time, and it's the disgusting truth of like especially this mm. business, is that the people willing to just be shameless and maybe not abrasive, but just glad hand and mm. zigzag their way of schmoozing will get to the top more than somebody that's going to be like, I think I'm really good mm. and I'm going to let the talent speak for itself. You got to have mm. a mix of both. I think you're so right. And I, I think the, the kind of self doubt, I'm going to call it good self doubt, interesting mm -hmm. self doubt, good dirt, gritty, yeah. interesting yeah. person that creates an interesting comic. Mm -hmm. And I think about this all the time, because I have it. That same um, complication, we'll call it, is often what makes it hard for you to market yeah. and network and glad hand, like you said. So often the people who aren't funny, because they're not, a, and this is an oversimplification, but they don't have as much complication. They're running clean. They're oh, just yeah. kind of like clean consciousnesses. Yeah. And they come in, they see the brokens, and they go, oh, I cannot drink alcohol, and I'll have matcha lattes instead, and I'll do stand up, and I'll and I'll show up to the audition sober yeah. and in a yeah. suit. None of this. I'm not looking down on all of this, but I'm saying this they're like diet sociopaths. Diet sociopaths. <laughs> yeah, they're not like they're not full on, but they're like, oh well, I'll just streamline. I'll just streamline all this other stuff to get what I want. <laughs> they're like serial killers that are doing it. It's almost scarier yeah. that they're doing it but I, which in is, like a clean way. Which is a sociopath. That <laughs> is. I'm not going to murder anybody, but I will ignore everybody's opinion of me to get what I want out of this world. I'm like, well, congratulations that you could do it. Also, that's really if you, if you get if you get recognized for being an underdog and you are self-aware, you know that you can only be an underdog once. Mm. And if you do it so well, you get vaulted over the fence. You're not an underdog anymore. You've also lost your identity mm. as far as who you were because now you've been accepted. Now what's your new act? Yeah. You can't be, you know. I agree. The... And the I, machines are messed up. I also, agree. I'm part of the machine. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And it's not even your opinions, too. It's like, I say this all the time. It's been on my mind lately. There's some comics that you vault them into a theater and they just don't make sense anymore. It's like, why is this guy in a ballroom? Like he, because his wound and his style belongs in like a shanty. Like, no, I don't, a shanty, but no like a, I don't have, like, I see the, the there's, you know, megalith comedians now selling out the biggest venues you can be in to perform. Yeah. And I think stand up, some stand up just doesn't work in that. And I've, I've gotten to the point where I could do some theaters Yeah, and it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel, mm. I don't get what I want out of the perform. Like a club is like, no, this is us, me and you, we're talking, we're just hanging out. Yeah. Even some of the clubs where it's like, 500 seat comedy clubs and people like what experience are you having all the way in the back where you just hear the kitchen banging around mm. and i don't want that for you you're preaching and to the choir i'm only yeah, charging I like i can give you a i can give you a great show for 30 dollars. Mm. i can't give you i'll give you the same show but if i charged you 300 dollars to mm. sit in some vip do, mm. you, do you do that stuff a lot of the clubs I do have VIP. I know because they, well that the, the, that ticketing system, which yeah. I try to fight against, and it's again. You mean the more cost more to sit in the front I, system? I, yeah, I'm you trying to like use. It. I'm trying. Well, just the whatever Ooh. stage ticketing and stuff, and it's yeah. like it's like using a straw to like bail out the Titanic. It's like, okay, I'm fighting against this 
the system that I don't like and the ticketing thing. Like I fought scalpers in my own way and mm. shit. Like like oh, lucky me to get to a point where scalpers are buying tickets, but also like the charge more to do a meet and greet. Mm. Like I won't do that. Yeah, I don't know if you've done that. I've, I haven't done that. No, that stuff. Like nothing says I love my fans more. Like give me fifty more bucks and I'll shake your hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I can feel that. Like that feels. Yeah. Slimy to me. No, I I agree. I'd I rather agree. just not meet you if I don't have a mood or if I like feel weird. Like I get yeah. socially weird after shows. We were co-headlining at uh, Hilarities. Not is it no, Hilarities? We went to Cobb's. Cobb's. Yeah. The night I met my wife. Really? Yeah. And I met my wife because I used to go out and say hi to the fans. But it wasn't it, for money. It was no. It was, you had a huge. Like, you were still doing the. I think you had the, the podcast. The, the was talk hitting. show had just started. The podcast was, was really big at that time. Yeah. And I was in my head because like, oh, everybody's here to see Pete, and I don't want to just. Oh, I, I never remember? want to linger around. I never. I, got, like, do you think about the moments that really shaped your whole attitude towards comedy? Because I remember, that comedy. Do you remember the, the hotel ballroom show in Elgin? It's like comedy, comedy, and, and no, no, it was in Lyle. Oh, Lyle. Lyle. Yeah, yeah, I did comedy, comedy. And uh, I would go over there. Bert Borth? Yes. Yeah, that's who booked it. <laughs> yeah. And what was the name of the guy that hosted it? Because he was so nice. Yes. And, and I remember the, it was the house Bert's MC they brother had. brother. Yeah. Was, was that his brother? They were related or something. I'm embarrassed that I don't remember his name. I feel terrible now, too. He, he was great. And Wesley was the, like, I think there was a guy oh, named Wes. <laughs> who needs it, man? Just be yourself, dude. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Kyle. I'm going. I'm in. That my... was the best thing that's ever happened on this show. I do physical comedy now. It's hard to write new jokes. I saw. I think I saw it all. I saw the the recognition that it had gone. Yeah. And then I saw Did the you twinkle in your eye that went. <laughs> just let it go. That's the funny thing to do. And then you did. I actively know. I know this doesn't look good, and I don't know why I'm doing it. This style? Yeah, just going for it. You know who you look like? <laughs> um, Dennis McKenna. I don't know who that is. I wish you did, because you'd be laughing pretty I'm hard. going for Wayne Grove from Heat. <laughs> <laughs> De yeah. Dennis McKenna is Terrence McKenna's brother, if you want to Google image search it and laugh I don't know later. who that is either. Terrence McKenna? The, I know the name, and you oh, have to tell me who it no, is. No, no, no. It's not like that. I shouldn't have said it like that. I guess I thought maybe you did. He's the guy who sort of did all the going into the Amazon, doing ayahuasca. He's the reason we probably know what ayahuasca is and DMT and all that stuff. He, he, no, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. A, a, a couple of dudes talking about DMT on a podcast. Thank God we finally got here. <laughs> Thank you, Terrence. <laughs> That's my that's my that's my budget that's my budget Joe Rogan experience. It's like you don't need DMT or a deprivation tank. Just just wear earplugs and eat Doritos, and it's the same thing. If you get in a hammock at the same time, same shit, man. Cost cost you twenty eight bucks. That's the Kyle Kinane, you that's know, yeah. adjacent experience. Yeah, put in some Krong bin on the AirPods and eat some uh, bugles. You'll get there. So that actually brings us back to where we were. Uh, the shot sipping, chain smoking, shirtless pre Kreischer mm -hmm. Kinane. And where are we now? We were talking about how Mother Love Bone and things oh, have oh. And I'm just wondering what you're, how you've changed. I, I quit smoking 15 years ago. Oh, nice. Uh, you know what I like to say? What? That means you're like cellularly speaking, you've regrown a new body twice over. Isn't that good? Is That's it? Because nice. every seven I years. try to, yeah. I, 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 again, it's like every. I, they, it's a little bit weird. Am I cheapening myself out of a life experience by saying, oh, I got a joke about that. I got a joke about that. You've been doing it so long. You just, that's yeah, why like, I like that's why jokes. the people that love crowd work for being spontaneous. It's like, you know, there's, they have a set response. It's a choose your own adventure yeah. and they have a route they're going to take. Yeah. And it's <clears throat> subway magic. I'm not trying it's to not, take, exactly. <laughs> I'm not trying to take away from Jeff Ross going into a prison and roasting the prisoners. But if yeah. you think there weren't 15 very hilarious writers with him yeah. that were writing yeah. material ahead of time, that's the job. Or just, or just even in general of like, oh, what do you do? This guy, like it's, it's, yeah. it's all, it's. It's also an attitude. The material becomes the attitude. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're either impressed or dismissive. He says he's something cool. You say, yeah, what a fucking bum! And you're in, you're in, you're in the zone. Like I've yeah. said, like nobody, 
yes, when you're on Molly at a rave, you are having the best time of your life. But play that, play that DJ track at 8 a.m. when you're just in your Corolla on the way to work and tell me this is still the, best the music. music is what brought it together. <laughs> <laughs> It's not. It's like there, there's a lot of components at work to make that experience, which is weird. I've said that before, and people with like really severe ADHD say like actually techno music makes me focus more. So I do have to go back on what I. But I'm like, all right, well, I'm glad you found your thing. I really liked it. But people with the dark spots in their head from how much Molly they did in '98, yeah. aren't like, what am I? Oh, am I open up the coffee shop at 6 a.m. <laughs> It's like, no, it's not what you're playing at that hour. And if it is, I'm not going into that fucking coffee shop. <laughs> that was great. You got to wait for the drop. No, I don't. I'm waiting for my bagel with cheese is what I'm waiting for. And you're on meth, I believe, if you're listening to this at this hour. You're reminding me, I went to some like hippie festival and they were projecting psychedelic images on a dome. Yeah. And I was like, this is horrible because <laughs> psychedelic images without psychedelic feelings. And I'm not even trying to get us to talk about psychedelics. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what you're confusing what's good about psychedelics it's not that you saw a toad turn into a pyramid turn into a caveman yeah. it's that you felt euphoria it's like you felt yeah liberated i, I physically held my ego and drop kicked it yes in, in, in and the left like, field but we have a projection of like abraham lincoln like yeah going I, on a slip and slide I, it's I, like I, that's not what it was appreciate the effort <laughs> like respect i've done like the goggles the vr goggles where they're yeah. like it's like you're tripping yeah and, I, and they were right there the people that made it i had to take it off and be like wow but in yeah. my mind i was like that fucking sucked because you know why yeah i wasn't on drugs mom called something cool <laughs> it's not it's not what it that's it's not what it is exact <laughs> your Appreciate mom was effort. like i made goggles that make you trip balls yeah, yeah. all right mom i do think that's pretty cool kyle <sighs> that means it's not cool that's that so it's not good cool. but oh. I, yeah, I don't. I've been. I I haven't drank in like two and a half months. Oh, okay. And that's just, it's the new like that's the new experiment. Yeah. You know, my every, favorite. Everybody else ran to DMT. I'm like, what if I don't do anything? This is gonna be wild. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is gonna be a hell of a hell of so a run. So two and a half months. Yeah, it just kind of happened. Just fell away. Yeah, I was sick for a week, and then that was the break, and then it's one of those. Hey, you got. Five days. When's the last time you haven't had a drink in five days? Just All right, on. let's add another day. Add another day. Wow. And it's I'm pissed because everything got better. I'm like, man, I just like being drunk. I really like it. Like, I'm not alcoholic. I don't need it. I just fucking love having a few beers. When it's, I love it. Yeah. It rules. <laughs> There's a Colin Hay song about being sober and it's and it's like a love song to like why can't I drink? It's like the most honest yeah. uh song. It made you just made me think of it. That's interesting, man. I, I feel like more people are quitting drinking for the same reason all information is like there's more YouTubes about just like why you shouldn't. Which the yeah. thing about it, the marketing was very one sided. It was all it's Miller time, it's and high my, life. And it's the all... people older than you well, I don't know, but it was like that was also a component of every social function. Of course. So that I, I also quit drinking. Uh, I don't know if you're saying that, but like I'm saying I quit drinking. And a lot of it was flipping it. I'm just putting this to you from I'm quitting drinking to I've been had. That that was very helpful to me. Like I I've been had by Talk about the the real estate developer that's just parking yeah. his money. I'm like, the Anheuser Busch doesn't give a fuck about you. That's how I got out of cigarettes. Yeah, they're just they're just playing you. I'm like I paid I paid a lot of money for this cough. Yeah, I spent a lot of money to smell bad and have my fingers be yellow. And yeah, a cough interrupt every comedy show and yeah. cough. Yeah, I remember <laughs> the cost me a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And again. Being known for things that you don't want to be known for. Is Kanane here? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He's over there. That's it. That what about Pablo's laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that guy? Pablo was... Which guy was Pablo? Pablo, he went into the army. Pablo was a guy in the audience at the lion's den who, it sounds like I'm making fun of him, couldn't be further from the truth. He laughed like this. <laughs> and you'd think that would be the worst thing in the world. And maybe it is, but in a in a room that seats about twenty five people, if he's one of them, 
You'll I, murder. I never understood the pointing somebody out for having a weird laugh. This yeah. is the one place yeah. where you should be free to have your joy to noise. do that. It's like being at the nude beach and like, look at that guy's little dick. He's like, this was where it was supposed to be okay. You're like, this we is had an agreement. Yeah, what? That, I was just in the cold you're, ocean. You're ruining the one thing that I thought was okay. This is fine. You're spine. absolutely right. And so, jazz, mm -hmm. jazz punts out here in LA. Yeah, when yeah. she would laugh, there, there are certain yeah. laughers. And there was a, a woman named, there still is a woman named Guru. She used to go to the uh, Tiger Lily. And if she was there, he'd have a great set. Yeah. These were people that are like, these people have to be at the album taping. <laughs> and it, and it's, yeah, it kind of spurns the other people. It does. Laugh. Yeah. Do you remember Bob Lola? I'm trying to, I'm not really. Again, how drunk was I every Monday at the Lions Den? Yeah. So tell me what, <laughs> what you're feeling better. You like, sleep better? Sleep. Sleep, being able to get shit done. We got, we got a commotion. A little commotion. Marauders. We still have marauders on the street. Well, we got to lock ourselves in. Yeah, we've been marauded. That's the new. Is that Civil War Part Two? Podcasters <laughs> defending the studio from uh, marauders. <laughs> are you my... telling the truth? Or are you telling the truth? What are you doing? <laughs> We t we're taking over the studio. It's not. It's podcast. It's not live. <laughs> I don't care. Hit record. <laughs> American people need to hear this. <laughs> it's a good Alex Jones yeah. kind of. It sounds a little bit like Alex Damn, Jones. That old shit. Um, uh, no, well, I just it just again that I think yeah, you know, it's weird in Portland. It, I'm, I'm still going to do shows, and there's first off realizing like, wait, I forget that I look like this. I don't. I forget that I look my age, and if I'm in a bar, I'll be like, who wants shots? Like, bro. Wrap You've had enough. Uh, you mean in your life? Yeah. Like, like that's look, enough. Like, why are you here tonight? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, man, no kids, living this life. And everybody in the bar is quite literally half my age, if they're even there, because there's this whole swath of people in their 20s that have already hit it hard in their teens or yeah. know the effects of drug and alcohol because their parents are closer to my age and they've seen what happens. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, I do not want. I don't want to be a youth freak and be all about what. But it's, I think it's very important to pay attention to what somebody that's in their mid twenty. I don't. I never know what the delineation points are between the generational names. Finish your thought, though. I, I don't but know. like, if whatever Gen Z is dealing with in life, pay attention to that. Yeah, that's important. I want. I want to be relatable. I still gonna want to do the comedy I want to do, but I still want it to be relatable. I saw Tom Papa last night at the store, and like he's one of my favorites because he's going to talk about anything he wants to talk about, but he still makes it so easy to listen to. Yeah, from any, I think from any angle. Yeah, to go like you know, well, because I'm this age, this is how things are. He's like just matter of fact about his life. Yeah, and it's so easy to listen to. I, I agree. think from any generation, like, and I want to be that, which means listening to the shit that's going on with somebody that's 25 by watching their stand up or consuming the art that they're putting mm, out mm. and uh, they're not drinking and they're not in a bar just getting wasted like right and it makes me look back like yeah but we were all drinking back in the day like no i was drinking yeah. and that's what i thought everybody else was doing because you don't notice the people that quietly slip out after their set yeah that like went home and went to work on time and did fine the next day yeah you just only remember the five other people that stayed in the bar until it closed on Monday. Right. We were all drinking. Right, right. And I went to the one of the shows here. It was like a Chicago show a few months ago. I was like, really? And everybody quit or needs to stop. <laughs> it was. Look, everybody had quit or needs to stop. This, ja <laughs> this jacket's getting pretty tattered in the elbows, guys. <laughs> wow. Think, uh, yeah. We'll hang it up. I think it is the information age. It's one of the yeah. underreported good things about the internet. It's really easy to talk about yeah. how shitty it is, which it is. Like you said, being had, though, being like, yeah, these are just like, oh, if I hate corporations, but now here I am just right. at the teat. Well, it's of like your joke. This one. Your wonderful joke. People who hate big government and socialism unironically enjoying a, a state park. Na yeah, and the national park. A national yeah. park. Such a brilliant <laughs> joke. But it's also, it, it, I laugh because I'm like, in what ways am I full of shit? You know? Yeah. That's the only comedy I like. You can say what you want. I needed to come back on the comedian to tell me, but like, tell me why you're an unreliable narrator. That's the most important thing I need you to address I in comedy. I agree more. Especially, I don't know, I can't speak 
for everybody, but I feel like especially men, men are so full of shit. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking about the men in my life, and, and that is not all men. But I'm just like, if there's people that men. I know, not all men, not all men. If there's people <laughs> that I know that are just creating their own reality, yeah, spewing it out, like you said, being the loudest, it's dudes. Yeah. And, and when I see a guy, my favorite comics are the ones that go up and and either are telling you directly or are indirectly telling you this is why I'm mm -hmm. wrong and this is why I'm broken, even though I can't stop myself. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe they can. Do you, I? Can I ask like what your routine in Ojai is? Like I you yeah. specifically like remove like I need to be better about not going on my phone and letting what people said on Reddit dictate my mood about myself. Mm. Or just anywhere. Yeah. Like is location? Are you just like do you have land? Yeah. Do you have a swath of land? I have a swath of land. You got fruit trees up there. I got fruit trees and and you got pets. We have a big old dog, and we're going to get him goats, and we have chickens. Goats and chickens. Yeah, I'm vegan, except I eat my own chicken's eggs, which is a great loophole, because they're ha they're the fucking happiest chickens in That's the world. That's why I can't do the vegan, full vegan. I still And again, the dairy yeah. farming's just as bad. Yeah. Your boy's still up, up in that cheese. Oh, up in the cheese. Yeah. Cheese is what keeps you from going vegan. Is that egg, what you're saying? Cheese, eggs, wearing leather. I'll say leather. Uh, this vegan really mm. enjoys the fact that I can eat eggs uh, yeah. from my own chickens. Yeah, that's a nice loophole. It's right there. It's right there. But I mean, if they're saying good morning to me while I'm stealing their babies. And they don't. It's every day. <laughs> How old were you when yeah. you found out a chicken lays an egg every day? This day old. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, it wasn't until recently. It was yeah. single digit years ago. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you I, can I a, need to eat these eggs. We have they that's just how keep we, making. It. That's how we feel. We yeah. got a fridge full of hard boiled eggs. Oh, you drive the country like fresh eggs. Please come take Please these. Take yeah. them. Same with fruit. Please yeah. come take some oranges. Please. I'm, I'm like, begging you. I'm really excited about what you got going on up there. You, if you're ever up there, this is not an empty offer. Please yeah. just text me and, and just enjoy. Just relax. It's beautiful. It's it really is. Portland's this way too. I love Portland. Yeah. Got a good vibe. You know yeah. what I mean? Good energy. So I mean, unless you want to believe the fake news, then go go for about it. Portland. Yeah, it's got it's it's got it's got a reputation. gnarly stuff happens, but yeah, show me a city that's interesting that doesn't have it. That doesn't have. Don't show stuff. me a city that sucks. We don't have trouble. You probably don't have culture either. You're probably the most boring fucking place to live in the world. <laughs> What I want to go back to what you said, I have this line that I can't work into my act, but I go, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I, apparently I think it's on my phone. <laughs> so there's this like lack that we're like chasing on our phones. And I relate to that. I just blocked, Val and I were talking about it. I blocked Facebook on my phone because I thought Facebook was kind of like methadone. Yeah. Because it's not as good as Instagram. You just yeah. go on there, you just see somebody from high school being like, it's going to be May or something like some meme. But I yeah. was like, this is what happens. You start looking at it every time you go to the bathroom. And then before very long, you don't know how you ever went to the bathroom without looking at it. And then that becomes everything. And I hate the feeling. The reason I, one of the reasons I went back to being vegan was I was like, I don't remember how I used to not eat meat. Like I literally couldn't remember. And I was like, but I also remember it being yeah. very easy, but we get very black and white and we're like, that's what food is. And that's what sitting on the toilet is. Yeah. And it turns out you can get rid of anything you want. You just have to establish a new pattern. But uh, like you said, like, oh, recognize that you're being had. You're being had. That I got rid of face. I mean, I have all these accounts that are run. I just told yeah. them like, change the password if you want me to have this for marketing things. So I yeah. have a Facebook that I can't access. Yeah, <laughs> I had I had Twitter that like I told them to change the password. I'm like, this is just making me shitty. Yeah, so I don't have access to that. Um, I don't participate in Reddit. I just read it. Yeah, um, it can serve as news, like really, or ju just in just information, information. of like. Hey, I want. What does somebody actually think about this product now? Do I think that you work for the company, or is this a real review? <laughs> but it can't. I mean, it's been. I, I've seen like you know. I've gotten good information out of that. And and Instagram is just. I've curated it to where I really don't follow any comedians. I don't want to see politics on it. I don't want to see. I want to see cats. I want to see bicycles, and then just a lot of accounts where guys build really intricate Hot Wheels tracks. Yeah. And race those. Yeah. And I'm like. I can make this exactly what I want it to be. So if I'm wasting time, I'm wasting time by what I've chosen, not yeah. what you're telling me I need to waste time yeah. with. 
But it still does it infuse still trash. it with your stuff, though. Like it, people you don't follow. Yeah. What did you do? What did you do when you were twenty four? What did you do at the time where yeah. that wasn't with yeah. you? Like, did you just sit and look at a thing? We didn't just sit and stare. This is what I mean. It's like, I don't even remember how I used to not eat meat. Like, I don't remember what we were doing. I napped a lot. I napped a lot with a disc man. I think there were disc mans. Yeah. Disc men. Yeah, or a Walkman, or even just the early iPods. Yeah. Magazines. Yeah. A magazine is just a printout of Instagram. Yeah. You just kind of, you're tapping it. It doesn't do anything. I never, again, it was. It was specific, like, this is a BMX magazine. I'll read it. Right. There was nothing more rewarding than being at a checkout stand in a grocery store and not recognizing anybody on an Us Weekly. I'll like, tell you. I'm doing it right. I am crushing it if I don't know who any of these people are. I can Now it's agree. I'm just old. But if I was 30, I'd be like, thank God I don't know who this is. I don't know, man. I, I agree that you, you're you more likely to go that way when you're old. But there's a lot of old people who are really into that. Like if I were to say that the average Us Weekly reader, and maybe it is a, a young woman in her 20s, but I think there's a lot of housewives in their fifties that are like ripping into real ones, real housewives. Real ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get ripping into the real ones. Get, I, I there's don't know. more there's more stuff than ever to con, to consume. And I'm that gonna, will go that's how every generation's felt. When you have to recognize that every generation yeah. felt the way you felt when you got to your age. Yeah. So it's not some new it's, it's not a, new. the sky is falling has never felt more real than it has right now. Yeah. But it's also did you spend your whole day reading about how the sky is falling? Yeah. Cuz then it is. If you just got up and went and walked around would you feel the same way? It's Bill Hicks. Yeah. Is, you is, open the window is, and it's just, whoosh, I can't do the cricket sound, but he does the cricket sound. Because he's like, the news, everything, rah, 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 and you look in the window yeah. and he does the cricket sound. I, I need to revisit Bill Hicks because it's like when I saw him when I was 12, I'm like, this, this guy's just like mad. And I'm, I didn't like him when I was young either. No, and I didn't get, I haven't gotten to the point where I would want to experience. Even though I agree with most of what he says, he's still not my I don't think it aged well. Cup of tea. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, because he's like, well, it's, I'm like, I just remember his whole thing was like, we need to learn how to love each other. And then it's also like, we need to shoot Billy Ray Cyrus. I'm like, well, you could only see the world now. <laughs> That's true. I, I think about how I want my own mind to settle down. Like how I would, like if you were to ask me, would you like more thoughts or fewer thoughts? Yeah. And you can will to have more thoughts. I, I'm talking yeah. about involuntary thoughts. I would like less involuntary thoughts. Like I'd like it to be quiet when it's quiet. And I look yeah. at things like Reddit, Facebook, Instagram as just other people's thoughts. It sort of changes it. Why are you letting all these non-experts, uh, fuck yeah. even experts, why are you letting all of this thinking in? I, I, because do we think we're enriching ourselves? I like, think that's, oh, I'm gathering, you're, you're gathering opinions. You're not that's gathering the lie. information. Yeah. But you're all, you're like, you've meditated yourself. <laughs> into space, right? Yeah, sure. So this why? Morning. So why are you still? Don't you have it? Can't you click into like? Yeah, no, I can. That's why I took Facebook off my phone. <laughs> you know, then then you realize. Look, I'm not saying I have it figured out. Did you do all the drugs? I did a I did a fair amount of psychedelics. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still do them? I will occasionally do a psychedelic. Yeah, but not. Which ones are you doing? If this is well worn territory, right? No, it doesn't come up as much as it used to, wouldn't you say, Katie? It doesn't come up as much as yeah. it used to. I had a, a ketamine experience recently that was very, very profound. Yeah, I did too. It was from a guy named Travis in a green room. <laughs> so he's like, you know, people do this it's for therapeutic reasons. I'm like, not in the green room of the Sacramento punchline. It is, <laughs> Travis. But, new, but thanks. This sorry. is pretty wild. <laughs> this dude named Travis. You did it after the show, I hope. Yeah, yeah. I can't I won't that I won't do things before a show. You wouldn't be able to do stand up after ketamine i don't think no no no. or it would just be a lot of like i love you like, yeah i mean i didn't I, I just did however much travis gave me so, <laughs> so i don't know i don't i, I wasn't from, i don't know if it was a there a medical dose yeah. <laughs> however but much he had to spare it's funny how, how much you realize they're all the same because what i would say meaning the conclusions that they bring you to whatever the substance is you realize that it's stripping away it's not actually introducing something new as much as it's stripping away the impediments to what has mm. always and will ever be with you. So there is this state that you are, and I've yeah. just put a lot of Pete identity, ego, yeah. and a lot of games that I'm playing. You know, they're not all nefarious games, but like right now we're playing a subtle game of like, 
Yeah. You'll listen to me. I'll listen to you. That's fine. It's not a bad I game. I thought that was called a conversation. It is called a conversation. <laughs> but, there, but there is a dance to it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just saying, but behind it, there's something that's totally fine. And psychedel that doesn't really care how anything goes, yeah. whether I live or die. It's just sort of like good. And I find that psychedelics, whichever one it is, removes all the sediment from the lake, I, I guess. I'll ask my friends with kids this. How do you find optimism for the future? Because you kind of have to have it, I think, if you're a parent. To have a kid? Yeah. Because I don't I don't have to worry about the future. As much? Because yeah. you're leaving? Yeah. Because it'll just be done. <laughs> That's why all these people like, what? Well, like, <laughs> so you're, what you're saying is you don't care about my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like it, it's it's the vegan thing. Like, oh, I got sad because I saw one chicken that wasn't happy. Now I don't eat any of them. Like, I care about your kid. I care about everybody's kid. <laughs> it, that, you talk See, about an old joke. They have a joke about like how like I love vegans that use iPhones to look up cruelty free businesses. That's really funny. There's always that's like, I, great. I just want to make sure nothing was harmed in the making of this meal. I keep trying to wipe the fingerprints off this thing, but it's like they're on the inside of the glass. Oh, that is a brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I'm good at comedy, Pete. That's a brilliant. <laughs> can I put job. my hat back on? I'm very you self conscious. Can. It's, under, it's behind the no, couch. I don't give shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you think I'm the arbiter of whether or not you can get it? No, I need to face who I am. Yeah, <laughs> I think you I'm look having handsome. A, I'm having a brave moment. Do you remember that painting I made of you? It looked more like this. <laughs> what, Maybe, wait, I made what? you a painting, and I and you said I gave you too much hair. It's because I made your hair kind of wild. Where is this painting? You didn't give me this painting. I gave you a painting. You never gave me a painting. I definitely gave you a painting. Mm -mm. Gave you a painting. I don't. I have. I take all those things very preciously. Really? And I had. I then I texted it. you a picture of the painting. I can't believe I would have kept this painting. Okay. Of the, you? Te the text might be. I don't think. I, I haven't held on to texts as well. I've changed some phones since then. Ah, it doesn't matter. We'll do it later. <laughs> That's good I painted you. Hold on. Let me find I definitely thing. remember painting you and then you saying I gave you too much hair, but you look like oh, that well, painting now. All right. There it is. I've, grew, I've grown into it. Uh, where were we? Oh, optimism for I don't, the future. Your kids. I, I have, don't care about... Uh, yeah. this, this almost has more to do with um, a certain trust... That might even be biochemical that I just sort mm. of have, like, like meaning I can't take credit for it. Yeah. I inherited from my father a certain "it'll be okayness." Yeah, that I have even as a dad. Like I'll let my daughter climb a tree, while other people are just like, "Don't do that," and I'm just like, "It'll be okay." Mm -hmm. Like, so I have that big picture wise. Yeah, you could also break that down and just be like, when it comes to AI, for example, or whatever the next evolution yeah. is. You're talking about the things that are that seem new that aren't new, and yeah. one of them is going like, "This is the end. We're at the end. This is over." And I'm like, "Yep, that's that's we're right on course. We're right. The fourth turning, yeah. And something is going to come. I'm not yeah. I'm not saying we should be lazy. No, it does. But I feel, know there it does feel close to the end, but it always does. Yeah. We also can't. This is interesting. I'll put this to your brilliant mind. We can't separate that feeling of doom mm -hmm. that we have." is married to our own, like the planet is us and the way we feel about our bodies and we're like, I'm getting old, I'm decaying, I'm gonna die, it's all over! Uh, yeah. Don't so you, you watch see? It all happen. You are kind of a baby in a crib screaming, like, don't you see I'm dying? Yeah. And that kind of gets writ large in the world. And meanwhile, I'll give you despair, this is a Ram Dass mm -hmm. line, I'll give you despair if you also take like you were saying, the young people that aren't drinking, the young people. Yeah. A friend of mine just did a, a, a thing with the Neuralink people, and they were showing him a, a paraplegic that was playing Zelda with his mind. I was like, it's always both and. It's this and it's that. You want to hear my Neuralink joke? Can't wait. I don't want the internet in my head. I need a step between me and being able to look at tits. <laughs> <laughs> The, the day the internet's in my mind is the day I just get run over by a car. Like, yeah. how about some boobs? Crunch? Like, no, I need I, I need some some step between. No, don't do that. Don't look at that right no, now. No, you're absolutely right. But the, I know, and it, but it, there is also this, like there was the whole time like these coachless horses are gonna be the doom of us. Yeah. And like and now I see the food robots, and I'm like, don't make them blink. I know it's a robot. Stop making me feel that this has feelings. 
so I don't hit it with a bat because that's what I want to do. Dude, I turned my <laughs> daughter's play camera off yesterday and mm -hmm. on the screen it said, have a great day. And I was like, this is weird, man. I saw it like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it, you're not it, in there. It's like, oh, I saw this in the movies 30 years ago. Like, this is the future's going to be. Weird. Remember watched, Lawnmower Man, where he's like, I'm going to make all the phones ring at once. I was thinking about that this morning. We've been telling this story since we've been telling stories. I know. And it's like when you see the National Geographic photo winner, but you just experienced for a moment. I was at one of the restaurants that had the robot waiters, and they were all, I was, what? you've never seen them. They just, Portland's got a few places, and the, you still t you still talk to a person and order, but then they put it on the thing and it comes out to your table like, please take your food, <laughs> and then you can't see how full a thing is and you're spilling shit. You're like, this sucks. <laughs> And then, then I asked somebody, like, well, are you getting tipped more or less because now you have robots that are bringing the food out or people are justifying that to give you less money because the food's more money. Yeah. And you could see the, the hostess who took her, whatever their title is now. No, it's great. It gives me more time to interact with the customers and not worry about running that's food. I'm line. like, that's the script, that's huh? That's the line, yeah. But I, the way we were sitting, there was like the hallway where all the little food robots were lined up, blinking, but then... There was the hallway and there was the door into the kitchen. And I was watching a guy try to open a tin can with a fork in the kitchen. Oh, my God. And I'm like, maybe we need the robots. <laughs> like, which wh what begat what in this scenario? Like, are we getting dumber and the robots are getting stronger? Like, are they replacing our jobs or are you allowing it to happen? Because this guy, whose cousin is this? Because he's not he's not helping. He's not helping over here. Yeah. <laughs> this was this was the favor hire in the kitchen. I also, and the robot's blinking to just help you. He's oh please let me do that for you. <laughs> I think what we're gonna uncover too is just how many jobs it'll be weird again. I think it'll be weird to my daughter that most people did things they didn't want to do. I think it's gonna one of the changes will be so many jobs that weren't pleasant jobs will be mm -hmm. done by robots what we do with that i don't know it's kind of like your question what were we doing before we had phones yeah there's also a great joke i forget who has it but they're like actually i don't think it's a joke i think it's something i read in a spiritual book but it was like if you see like it used to take four hours to make dinner now we mm -hmm. cook it in four minutes yeah on the microwave uh, what are you doing with that extra three hours and 56 minutes? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the answer actually ends up being, I would say we're looking for a quality of our experience. We're looking for a deepening and a widening and expansiveness of our consciousness more than we're looking for something to do on the toilet. I, sh I think we're just freeing up more time to figure out how to maximize the productivity of the human. <laughs> Yeah, that you know be. what you're doing with that three hours and you know, fifty six minutes. You're working yeah. for somebody else. Yeah, that, why, that why do I you need an hour lunch break if you can make and eat your food in fifteen minutes? Right. So yeah, that's. I mean, I think that's what it is. It's like, oh, we're just making, we're freeing up more time to so, make workers work more. And that's, that's what, what I, I think, think is going to be interesting about, if you look, you you mentioned iPhones. So mm -hmm. that's sort of like a, a slavery that's happening now. And, yeah. and you look at actual, I mean, American historical slavery and all the slavery throughout history. What's interesting is, you know, this is the plot of Blade Runner, I just realized. Once we have robots that will do it, yeah. and then at what point do they revolt? I mean, that's what Blade Runner is literally about. I still have, I keep falling asleep at Blade Runner. I'm talking about the second one. That's how cool I am. I haven't made it to that one. The second one's. I, 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 I've I, tried so on many the first one so many times. I'm sorry, everybody. I know. There's I'm so many sorry. classics that I can't. I can't. I, I'm, I can't. 15 minute. <clears throat> Me too. I, I'm embarrassed that this is on the record, but I've given Blade Runner so many tries. And I'm just like, it's so rainy. <laughs> it's a dark, rainy hey, I'm going to watch city. this in Portland. Or it's a sunny day out, and I'm going to watch this when I could just be outside. Like, there's no time in my life where I'm like, oh, uh, bl watching Blade Runner would be a great idea right now. <laughs> I'm not living a Blade Runner life. When I <laughs> get a all. break, not at all. I'm, I'm watching not... carpool karaoke. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I'm with music, like all this moody shit. Like, I listen to music to feel better. Yeah, and I, I, I get that. Have to, I'm just now at 47 <laughs> deciding to set moods. Like, I, I walked here listening to, like, yeah, weird, like 
Caribbean light funk. I'm yes. like, this isn't you. Yes. Why not? Yes. We don't have to listen I, to no effects all, all the day. time. Yeah, bad religion is a sometimes it's, let's food. Let's take a break. I have been telling, Katie knows this, I've been telling my phone, play Yacht Rock on Apple Music, and it does it, and I get so elevated by it. And then people go, what kind of music do you listen to? And I'm like, just, just whatever you want me to say. Yeah, absolute just absolute bullshit. Whatever, no, I just want to avoid it. Whatever you think I'm listening to, yeah. that's what I'm listening to. Mm-hmm. What I'm really listening to is Hall & Oates. Yep. <laughs> Michael what? McDonald. God, it's got some 10cc going on over here. <laughs> James Taylor. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, fucking Pablo Cruz. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm listening Not to. Not in love, oh no. And then just you get it. Yeah, I am listening to. I'm consuming things to make sure I'm in a good mood. Yes, I'm not like, well, oh, this good mood really needs a. Yeah, it needs to put some pings in the armor here. Let's. I agree. Let's get bummed out. I agree, and, and that's new for me. I used to be all Radiohead, all the National. That was it. All, and then Phoebe Bridgers is pretty recently. I would listen to all that sad uh, stuff. Pe- people moved to the. I, that was an early thing. Radiohead and I'm like, why are we? Why are we listening? To, when do you, when do you listen to this? Yeah, when it's raining. Like, do you listen to this on the way to work? No, I'm already going to work. It sucks. I better get amped up. I'm out of work. Well, I'm going to listen to something that's like cool. I'm out of work. Yeah, I'm at work, and they're going to let me listen to music. Let me listen to something that makes me think I'm not at work. That's like, right. I don't want. To. You listen to it after a breakup. Yeah, that's when you listen to Radiohead. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, hey, knock on wood. I don't have to yeah, listen yeah. to Radiohead anytime soon. This is wood. Is it? There you go. There's wood under there. Somewhere. This episode is brought to us by our friends at Hostage Tape. The Pete's pick that has most greatly impacted my life in the past couple months is Hostage Tape. It's mouth tape. You put it over your mouth before you go to bed, and it helps your brain get 20% more oxygen. That's right. Don't be a mouth breather. Breathe through your nose. You'll get 20% more oxygen. What does that mean? Deeper sleep, which you will notice. I have huge, epic dreams and wake up feeling refreshed and fantastic. Since I started using hostage tape, I don't even take a nap without putting it on. It also feels just right, meaning it adheres, it sticks on and stays on through the night, but comes off easily in the morning, comfortably, and is breathable just right. It's got, uh, what else? It's got, it's got these benefits. It reduces your risk of sleep apnea. It's great for your oral hygiene and bad breath, and it even helps with snoring, in my case, eliminating it entirely. If it was just a snoring fix, that would be pretty cool, but getting the breath, getting the oxygen to your brain, so you can have true restorative sleep is such a huge game changer. So find out why these guys are the official breathing aid of the UFC. They are the real deal. And I'm so glad that they are sponsoring this show. I thought it was going to be weird the first time I tried it, but your brain gets gets the message. As I always say, you close the tunnel. It's like, all right, take the bridge. We're going to breathe through the nose and we're going to get so much deeper, better sleep and with such an obvious and easy solution. So you'll only find this offer here on this podcast. You can get a six month supply, which you're going to want, trust me, for $99. That means you save $50 when you go to hostagetape.com slash weird. This is the only place Hostage Tape sells a six-month bundle. Get into it. Support Better Sleep Tonight. Support this show. Go to hostagetape.com slash weird. Save 50 bucks and sleep better tonight. We're also brought to us by our friend at BetterHelp. What a wonderful way to support this show and to support your life. This episode is sponsored by better help. With your schedule being so packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it is easy to let your priorities slip, but we, even when we know what makes us happy, believe me, I get it, it can still be hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are even more important. You got to get in that time. It's greater than the sum of its parts, as we've always said on the show. Both Val and I are huge believers in therapy during times of transition, unpacking trauma, wanting to get in a better relationship, a better work situation, talking to a licensed therapist, 
the therapist, is greater than the sum of its parts. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, even if your schedule is crazy, BetterHelp is the way. It makes it so simple to fit it into your schedule. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. You can even switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So never skip therapy. Never skip therapy day. That's what I'm saying. With BetterHelp, visit BetterHelp.com/weirdo today to get 10% off your first month. That's better. Help, H-E-L-P dot com slash weirdo. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this show. And guys, do yourself a favor. Take care of yourself. And we appreciate your support. So um, we have a, a couple things going. We were starting to get into... I also... I, I suppose having a daughter is an act of faith that the arc of the universe that there is some sort of meaning to life. I think that it is a define. I think getting married, the mm-hmm. Rob Bell who married us, very brilliant guy. We have our vow, his notes for the like sermon that he gave, mm-hmm. and it, he was talking about how getting married in, in a time like this is an age of is an act of defiance. He was. It, it's yeah. like everything's on fire, and we're like celebrating love. Everything's on fire. And we're having a baby. Yeah. It's a heart choice. I, I don't want to be a cliche, but it's not a head choice. It's like. It's like what I would tell my daughter. It's like our love was so big that it yeah. made you. It wasn't like we went, well, here's the finances, here's the global economy, here's the Yeah, well, you could talk yourself out of or into any decision if you yeah. want to go No with expression the of love is perfect, yeah. yeah. No expression of love is perfect. Well, that's my friend, uh, my best friend Bob, growing up, and he's got two kids. I'm like, well, how do you, because we'll get in this, like, oh, this is fucked up. And he's like, I just, ha- I don't have a choice. Yeah. I have to be optimistic about the future so i'm going to be that because i I have my kids and i'm not going to let these other things sway me from yeah thinking it's going to be fine like you're saying it's going to be okay yeah out you absolutely and out of love too when he says i can't help it yeah i think he would say i've tasted too much of my own nature this is very hippie language i don't think he would say that i know but this is how i would interpret it <laughs> i know bob i don't think he would have said i tasted my own nature well we love that was, whatever we probably would have slapped him <laughs> kyle whatever this is don't, please don't ever say that again <laughs> don't ever say i've tasted my own nature Ugh. <laughs> it's like a vegan porn slogan it's disgusting pete <laughs> Is that printed on one of these Vita Coco oh things? Oh my God, I've tasted enough of my own nature. I'll end this podcast right now because of that sentence. Oh that was gross. Oh my God. Was I supposed to shake it? It was. I was you supposed to shake, shake it. it up. I, I was today days old when I learned that I've been listening to too much Rupert Spira. Because <laughs> that is something I would hear and just be like, yeah, he tasted uh, oh, nature, his true nature. Let me be your anchor in reality here, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I know... <laughs> I know you're up in Ojai with your goats and your fruit trees, but don't you say that shit around me ever again. <laughs> I, drank, I drank your fucking hippie juice. Oh my <laughs> but God. don't you dare fucking say that around me again. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I'm trying. Mar- I want to say Marilyn Manson over here tasting his own nature. Oh took, my- a, took a rib out to taste oh his own yeah. nature. yeah. Remember that rumor? Yeah. Not true, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe. He definitely has suck my own dick face. <laughs> you know, some people have big dick energy. He has a that, suck of my that own I, dick That makes face. up for what you just said. This guy's got, I suck my own dick face. I, said, I don't know what you were doing. That was life, right. But okay. You did it right. <laughs> this guy's got real, I suck my own dick face. But it, that put it out there. <laughs> that one works. I got the taste out of your mouth. This guy got real, suck my own dick face over here. Do you remember Brunch for Atu? <laughs> Me, you, and yeah. Harris, we were in Austin. Yeah. Um, and we saw a guy who looked like a vampire, and we were having brunch, and Kyle called them brunch for Atu. And it's I not laughed even, about it. doesn't even rhyme or anything. That's what <laughs> made it so good, was that it was a little off. Yeah. It made it better. <laughs> well, that what it, was that whole thing about imperfection? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually like human beings like things that sound human, and yeah. that made it human. It's in the salesmanship. That's right. Yeah. It was excellent. <laughs> I was going to say, though, and this is this is what I was trying to get at, and I am going to circle back to that point, believe it or not, but I, I have another way to say it. Whatever this is, the universe, it likes to push forward mm-hmm. almost against everything. It will yeah. keep 
you know how it'll fill a vacuum. It'll yeah. it'll create life. It'll it'll blah blah blah. Yeah. So there's a certain. Uh, well, I'll just say it very simply, creation and and forward seems to be in this thing, and that so having a kid can feel. And yeah. you know, it's not just a kid. You know that thrill of a new joke or or writing something. Yeah. And it, 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 you're you're in line with what's happening when you're creating whatever you might be creating. I guess I just have more of a nature of like, oh, it, it, yeah, everything will push forward. I don't know if the human race is part of that. Oh, I'm not. That's where I, f yeah. I feel like, oh, nature is like, we're a component of it. We just have the consciousness. We're burdened with this consciousness of like, I'm also an integral part. No, you're not. Yeah. I'm not the, the, the you in the communal sense. Like, no, we're not. Yes. We happen to peak and dip the whole idea of like aliens there could have been aliens you know coming and going for the age of the of this universe or any other universe just yeah. as what we think like again it's a great way to minimize your like problems the old it's a jeff Klinger bit from early on about it was more of like somebody said long story short and I was like no that was long story long long story short is like you know, billions of years ago, a star exploded, created this, and the universe, our universe now as we know it was created. Long story short, I got a lot of parking tickets. Like, <laughs> that's a long story short. <laughs> but it was like, like, yeah, the, yeah. like expanding and contracting the idea. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we could, I can minimize my issues by thinking, but I'm also like, you, now your world is, you have a kid and you believe in this. And yeah. my world is like, nah, eh, well, it's all worm food. I don't want to be an asshole while I'm here, but it'll all. Yes. We'll, we'll all enrich the but soil for the, the fruits of the future. That's the first uh, lesson, though, is to recognize the impermanence. Mm. Every, any psychedelic worth its salt will at least whisper to you that everything's mm. yeah. melting. Yeah, love it. And it's a joke. Kyle Kinane joke coming at mm -hmm. you. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Mine's then. I'm excited. That's why I said, are you ready twice? Yeah. Why do we give mm. people in hospitals flowers and balloons? Two things that are gonna like die in front of their eyes. Oh yeah. And I think I think I maybe gave you the tag or you said it. You're like, why not ice sculptures? You know? <laughs> but that that is what we could call despair with our minds. Oh, that's too stupid. The punchline of that joke is like, I'll get him a tortoise. There you go. And then you could paint get well on the show. <laughs> Uh, you remember it. Yeah, now I remember it because I've seen the premise about the flowers at hospitals. I'm like, oh, I had a good joke, but I've heard it done a lot in the world. I won't do it anymore. Oh, uh, I like it. But it, the impermanence and all that sort of stuff, uh, mm -hmm. I see I see wisdom in that. I see that being like, that. Yeah. that's also what's going on. So you don't take it too seriously. Yeah. That's sort of like, there's the bad, we're dead already, and there's, believe it or not, there's the good, we're dead already. Yeah, what do you, what do you tell people is the reward for living a, a morally good life if there's no heaven or anything? I, I not to be coy, I, I would say that's completely the wrong question. Yeah, uh, that's like saying what is the last note of a symphony because yeah. that's the point. That's the reward. Is that's an Alan Watts point? It's like okay. the, the dun da da. Like that was the point of the song. Yeah, the point of the song is the song. The point yeah. of life is life. It's a it's a dance. It's a symphony. It's the moment. So there is no reward. But this is what people use like religion to think like, oh, it's a, you know, like, well, you use that to keep you in line. Why do I need a God to keep me in line? I, why am I compelled to be a morally okay? Why am I compelled to be vegan or not yeah. vegan? But yeah, you want my answer so, where I where I'm at today? Yeah, I, I we're playing the game. We're playing the game, baby. We're on the podcast. <laughs> I would say it's a recognition. Don't don't freak out with my words. <laughs> It's a recognition that your essential nature and my essential nature are the same thing, that there's only one awareness. There's only one okay. awareness. So aliens, me, an animal, yeah. anything. Human beings don't have consciousness. Consciousness takes the form of a human being by constricting itself. So the motivation for being moral is not just love your neighbor as yourself, but recognizing that you and your neighbor are the same thing. We're all leaves thing. on the same tree. Yeah. How, where can I stab that I'm not stabbing myself ultimately. And, and that's the truest morality, the morality for the reward later. Yeah. That's just training a dog, not no disrespect, but that's how I felt when I was a Christian, a more yeah. traditional Christian. It was like, don't do that or you'll go to hell. Well, that's yeah. the stick. You do that and you'll go to heaven. Well, that's the, that's the dog treat. Yeah. That's, that's some nonsense to me. The yeah. deeper level when Jesus 
sorry to be so Jesus-y, I got him on the brain today. Let's hear when he says, I and the Father are one, that I is the same I that I am. It's the same I that you are. There's only one I. I refers to the knowing that knows reality. So he's saying, I and the Father, the universe, are one. So we recognize there's nobody in the other boat. Or to quote Father Greg Boyle, he said, we, the problem is we've forgotten we belong to each other. That's morality. So is that, so is that how you can incorporate the Christianity, because I just haven't delved into it. I've been like, I'm still, you know, 19 years old. That stuff's bullshit, man. Yeah. I actually really like your that stuff's bullshit jokes for what it's worth. I think they're hilarious. Well, because they still come back on like, but if you're, if it's, yeah. Oh, if they're you're using it to be a better person. Then why am I mad at you for yeah. what you want to do with your Sundays and your free time? Yeah. 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 You want to hear the weirdest one? I'm working on a bit about it. I don't know if it'll ever happen. But I believe in God, but I don't think God exists. Like the idea yeah. that God exists is nonsense to me. To exist, you have to stand out from the ground of reality. That's mm -hmm. what we think. I think I'm in my body yeah. and this exists because it stands out for me. I think God is the ground of being. It is the background. It is. Well, it's everywhere. It's love. It's constant. It's everything. Yeah. You don't look, this is a Richard Rohr, you don't look out at God. You look out from God. So we're just talking about consciousness. It's another word for consciousness, awareness, beingness. I guess I never like went back to the Christianity to think of like, oh, there was, the idea was there early on. It just got... Well, it's been incorrectly belabored by, yeah, I got dragged. It was just a dumb tweet, but it was like, I've just like the idea, like I just made a joke about court being like, oh, like court is this place where, like put your non shit wiping hand on this book. That's been, uh, that's been rewritten a thousand times by drunk winos <laughs> and swear to tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> so funny. But it, it is like, oh, this is just a retold, retold. Like, There's old Dwayne Kennedy bit about how wine, how wine had a bit. The story yeah. gets away from you. I don't know. I saw a dog. I, it was a beast. It was a beast with four heads. The bit starts where he goes, uh, the Bible, there's a lot of, there, let's say he says, like, there's a lot of begot and yeah. a lot of wine. Yeah, yeah. You know how when you're drinking wine, the story kind of gets away from you? Mm -hmm. That's what he says. It's so funny. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this, like, has been, who did I just? Who just had the joke about all the book letter? Oh, from... Rory, Rory Scovel. Is it him? Like, yeah. Where he's like Peter to like. Peter why does he keep writing us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rory's got some of the best Bible yeah. jokes in the biz. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to know it to. Yeah. You know, he, from the south. He absolutely killed it. And yeah, I had real jealousy when I watched a lot of those jokes. I was like, damn it, because yeah. <laughs> he, he got it. Yeah, that's he a good special, it. and you're like, ah. Get but, there first, but I don't think I. I never looked at it like I'm still so against the organization. Like, oh, the idea was always there. We really yeah. just ruined it, right? Trying to control people, and that's absolutely true. And for what it's worth, I think love or truth or reality will find its way and is finding its way to you or to us to everybody. I, I think it's very gratuitous. Are you are saying. you that, or do you have to remind yourself that you think that way, or do you? Well, I like I walk through life thinking I'm like blissed out and I got a good handle, but then I'm like, no, your instant reaction to things like fuck you for not using a signal, kiss yeah. my ass yeah. for not picking up your dog oh, shit, Kyle. and then I have to go like, wait a minute, I'm a good person, Kyle. I, I'm not a good person. I mean, let don't take that out of context. That's not, <laughs> I, these days, you're not. You know what I mean by that. I, I'm saying. On my drive down, I'm listening to Rupert Spira, mm -hmm. non-dual lecture, feeling lovey, feeling love. And uh, someone pulled into my lane and was mm -hmm. going 30, and I was in the fast lane. And, yeah. you know, they get a nice fuck you. Not, yeah. not for them to hear, but... I believe I, in hell in that moment. <laughs> Am I in hell? Are you going to go to hell for this? That's, now we're back to that oneness you're speaking of. <laughs> but I think we need to define our, our terms a little bit. Is I think there's I, there's my awareness, which is what I really am. I know, I'm sorry, but I, yeah. there's no other way to say it. You are what knows your experience. And then there's Pete. And there's a line in my book where I go, I, Pete is not enlightened, but I am. Yeah. Pete is not loving, but I am. Pete, let's be yeah. real. I feel like you'll appreciate this. Pete is doing the same for most people. I like to think my daughter and my wife are exceptions. But a lot of my people get low-grade, well, love. Meaning yeah. you make me feel happy. I can make you feel happy. Mm -hmm. You don't annoy me too much. 
You don't yeah. ask too much of me. I love you. Fuck off. Pete, or we could just say the head, the intellectual yeah. mind, the the rational mind. Yeah. Almost incapable of love. The ego, almost incapable of love. I, I would say is incapable of love, but you are love. So I can uh -huh. step back. So when Kyle is having that day where you're in that groove, <laughs> you are. And when you go, fuck you for not using your blinker, that is a ignorance, ignorance. That's an ignoring of your true nature. It's stepping out of yourself to be this guy this who I like also love. This a very complicated way to live. <laughs> it is complicated. And, and, and you don't think we're just animals with a couple extra buttons? <laughs> <laughs> this I really don't want this to sound condescending. I don't <laughs> just... want you to say what I'm saying. I want you to say what you just said. You we're, know what I'm saying? We're gorillas that harness lightning. <laughs> yes, <laughs> gorillas so, with lightning. Sometimes that's <laughs> sometimes I'm like, yeah. Oh, we got a couple extra toys than the animal kingdom, but we're all and if that this this is the part I would never want to sound kind of saying, but if that works, gorillas with lightning, if that leads to peace, mm -hmm. I get more peace and equanimity and 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 joy yeah. out of literally beating it into myself. Like I'm so conditioned to think you and I are separate things, mm -hmm. but the more I recondition myself into going like, wait. So there's an edge to my awareness. There's a boundary. There's yeah. a border. I can reach a part of it where it ends. And that Kyle's, you have your own separate orb and I have my own separate orb. Yeah. I was like, I don't think awareness is that personal. I think it's it's creating it's an illusion of separation in the very same way that when you have a dream, you localize yourself in the dream to experience it. But that leads to better behavior on my part. But if yeah. gorillas... And, and more joy and more peace and more happiness. And if Gorillas with Lightning does it, I would <laughs> never want you to come like come back on the podcast in 10 years and say everything I'm saying. I love well, what you're saying. But I, uh, yeah, I still can't. I don't know if it's like unlearning something or what's ingrained. Like this oneness, I also, ex uh, you know, felt so many times of, just being in a bar with strangers who decided to all start having the same conversation and make fun of each other, even though we just met in an awareness after a few drinks. And like, that's yes, that's it. That is, that's it. the connection. Completely agree. And it's not, and you could come in with what you just said and somebody would yell horse shit and somebody else would be, wait a minute, if we're this, then how about that? And that would be this spiritual community that would exist only for that moment. Yes. Without, the route that you've taken. Yes. And that's what I would, I still can't leave that part behind. I'm like, that's reality. What are you saying? I have the chills right now. That's but like, that's, the, but that's the reality thing. is that we're still going to go to work and we're still going to, but maybe we'll remember that one night that was fun like that. And we all had this, but reality is you grind, you pay your bills, you die and you try to have a decent time until that moment. Like yeah. I, I, I still can't shake we're organisms that have developed to this point where we've constructed a system where a lot of us just have to go to work and feed our families. And I'm so grateful that I'm on this other yeah. path that not many people get to have. Yeah. And so just be grateful for that. But it's all going to be just casket nougat in a few years. <laughs> casket nougat. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that is fantastic. So I think I I I get excited when you're talking about it, but I'm also there's part of me like fucking all right, man. <laughs> okay, but but I know, but it's but that's what you've it's that's the route you've gone and it's great right. and it and it makes sense to me. Well that's why But I, I can't get my other foot out of this like yeah. fucking Pete's flying high, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why I mean it very sincerely. And I'm when pissed I'm like, I can't pick a lane. I want, but I love this Kyle. I love, I love this Kyle. It's that's my favorite. Anyway, there, there's this story that you came to mind. It's an old, old myth. It's not a Christian myth, thank goodness. I've been doing that pretty heavy this episode, but it's one of those great old creation myths. I forget mm. from which culture, and that's, I'm sorry. But it's called the toe bone and the tooth. Anyway. Mm. This young warrior, I'm really truncating it. This young warrior <laughs> goes into the woods like we all do. He goes into mm -hmm. his inner experience. And he meets a god. 
He meets a, a young woman who's mm. an animal. It's one of those. There's an animal, but she's a god. Yeah. He goes through all these trials so he can marry her because when he's with her, he remembers. Yeah. It's that. Okay. He knows his place in the universe, and they're madly in love, and she's in love with him. He does all these feats of strength so he can marry the daughter, and he mm-hmm. does it. And then I forget exactly what happens, but she gets kind of sick as, as they're getting closer to the human world. He's trying to walk her back to his village. Mm-hmm. She dies, and, and he buries her, and he has her bones, and he takes a toe bone and a tooth, mm-hmm. and, he go, and he gets back to the village. Actually, it's better than that. Yeah. They bury her. He goes back to the village and he can't remember. Everyone was like, where were you? What were you doing? He can't remember. Mm-hmm. He was in love. He can't remember. Yeah. So he goes back. He has a vague sense that something happened and it was important. Digs up the grave. All he can find is a toe bone and a tooth. Okay. That's us. So you're in a bar with that moment, yeah. which really did give me the chills. Yeah. That's the toe bone and the tooth. You're like, I don't remember who this was or what this was, but we're all having those moments. Merging, it could be yeah. live music, it could be comedy, yeah. it could be a conversation, but what how it could be skydiving. Something wipes away everything that we're constantly telling ourselves we are, our personalities, where we're from, our past experience, and what's mm-hmm. left is just us. The the struggle to define, I mean, it, it's weird, like the not drinking for two and a half months because like oh i'm the guy that's always going to have a beer or something it's like oh i'm trying to not be sorted out by mm. the, the thing i think i'm kind of I realize what you're saying like oh yeah I, i'm sick of like trying to make sure people know who i am by these different parts like right. kyle looks like this kyle's always this guy kyle, like right i get what you're saying on that part because that's removable and it's so hard to do that while also trying to still be from the Midwest and also not sound f- like you're full of shit. <laughs> right. But if you get to the point, you don't care if you sound like you're full of shit because you're happy. I'm still worried about sounding like I'm full of shit because I still think I'm full of shit. Yeah. So that's... No, I've gotten over that clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're crushing it, man. <laughs> no, and I wouldn't change it for, for but the if world. But you, like, you can make yourself happy to the point where none of that matters anymore. And I'm in this mix of not p- what people think of you shouldn't matter. But if everybody thinks you're an asshole, you might be an asshole and you should work on that. So I yeah. can't get rid of one yeah. with, with, I can't not think about that. I don't want to meditate myself up my own ass. I think, though, and maybe you need to hear this, I don't know, I think it's very, very possible and even likely to establish, establish mm-hmm. yourself in this understanding, whatever, however you want to phrase that, um, this oneness or whatever, mm-hmm. and just keep being Kyle, being from the Midwest, doing comedy. My teacher, yeah. Rupert Spira, says, you don't even have to tell anybody. I like talking about it. This is a podcast. I like sharing these yeah. ideas. I don't think... It's uh, mutually exclusive. You could be like far out, we're all one, and still be doing everything you're I, doing. Yeah, I guess I just get scarred. Maybe it's, it's scarred by the people that went like 100% improv or the uh, adults going to clown school, which like <laughs> where the whole world's a stage. No, it's not. The whole world's a factory and we're all working in it. Stay in your fucking department. <laughs> Let me stop traffic for a TikTok. Get hit by a car. It's not a stage. I don't, I can't do that whimsy shit. It's not. We're all part of the machinery and you're not pulling your weight to just get through. Like, I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't have. Because we're talking about the Kyle that you stopped drinking, right? So you were right on it. I'm You're taking like, a break. I don't know. No, what no, no, I, no. Yeah. I know. I, I just mean today. Today, Kyle's yeah. not drinking, and you said I thought I'd always be the guy with the beer in my hand, yeah. or I'd always be a Midwesterner. But you live in Portland. Mm-hmm. I know you can make the argument. You can take me out of the Midwest, but yeah, can't. yeah, it's a mindset. I get it. I understand that. <laughs> I'll but, always feel bad about existing. But don't I always worry. like to say, if, if if we took you, so your sense of being. The, your your awareness was the same when you were 10. Like when mm-hmm. you were 10, there was this sense of awareness. But the, the experiment that I like to do so when someone's like, this is who I am. If I took you to another planet 
and on this planet, something about this atmosphere, uh, time works differently and your body works differently. So you're, mm -hmm. you're going to live forever. And every day is like a million years long mm -hmm. and you're there for a million years. Yeah. And it's a whole other culture. There are all these other things to do. Yeah. How many millions of years before you completely forget Kyle? Like Kyle, the whole thing was just like a dream. Yeah. I can even play with your ge genes and change your genes. Yeah. So your genetic makeup and your memories. And we could even wipe those. The lament of the vampire here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, the lament of a vampire. Yeah. But what would remain after millions and millions of years, what would be the same? What's the only... It's a Ramana Maharshi meditation. Mm -hmm. What cannot be taken away from me? Yeah. It's the, it's the knowing that knows all the things that change. Yeah, and why can't we know that and be like, dude, stop doing your fucking TikTok so that's, in the yeah, street? So that's why somebody, I don't think you can exclude them. So that's why we can allow prank videos in restaurants. <laughs> no, that's why we can allow Kyle going, get in your fucking lane. This is a factory. Ramdas's guru used to scream at people and yell at people that you're engaged, you're being you. Mm. That's why I'm like, I'm not trying to extinguish the light of Kyle. Yeah, but if you if you can be Kyle, and you already are this way, I think you have a lot of this going on it's the part of you that knows to get out of show business and go in the woods you wouldn't yeah. be so comfortable alone you wouldn't be so comfortable breaking away if you didn't have some connection to, to oh, it, this I it's, think. it's 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 a day-to-day -day basis it's like why do i like a guy playing saxophone in the subway but don't you dare try to do a weird dance in front of me in the car like why I don't, I don't know why it changes from day to day. Like that's, what's frustrating is there's some days like I love the whimsy and randomness yes. of the world Yeah, and it, there's beauty and everything that and there are those. And then the next day is like, fuck you, God. fuck everything. Get it. I'm like, I need you to hear I me. I couldn't relate more. <laughs> ask Val. Yeah. If you, have, if you do visit us in Ohio, just ask Val. I can tell how open my heart is based on how I hear music. Mm -hmm. And if my heart is open, any music, will bring me to my knees, almost. Yeah. And if my heart is closed, which it often is. Yeah. You said, don't be an asshole. Somebody came over our house last night and I was like, why am I being an asshole? I just saw it. And I was like, <laughs> cause you're depressed. I've been depressed for the past couple of weeks. And I'm just yeah. going like, fuck, hurt people, hurt people. I'm, I'm out there poking yeah. cause, I, cause I'm in pain. What registers as depressed, depressed if you know it's gonna be like, oh, the last couple of weeks. Cause yeah. I, don't, I don't, again, and I, I don't want to use Midwestern as a crutch. It's like, no, that's kind of the, the factory setting. I, I hear that. I expect the worst. I would <laughs> call it a, a debilitating numbness. That, that's what I call depressed. It's, yeah. And it means I can tell I'm depressed by my own standards when I'm not exercising. I, I'm less interested in learning. Controllable factors. Everything in my life just kind of starts hitting pause. And all mm. I want to do is I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. That's the problem. I'll be at coffee with a friend having a nice time, but I'm like, I don't want this to end because I'm going to go home and I know I'm not going to do anything for four hours. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean by that's, that. That's a definition of absolute happiness to me. <laughs> Which, oh yeah, no, you're right. From a different lens. Yeah. Katie, do you have to go soon? No. Okay. I'm just making sure because you have a thing at two. Oh yeah. I didn't know if you were getting squirmy because maybe, not that you're getting squirmy. I just saw you. No. I, I just want to make sure we're not pushing you too long. Yeah, I, I have a room full of musical instruments that I'm terrible at, and that's what I just sit there and make my noise. I'm not going to force it on somebody. I think but that's great, it's, though. I, th I, I you know, I'm not giving you my. I thrive in solitude. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's especially playing music. Music helps you. I'm not. I can't say what it does for you, but music, writing. Even swimming, running, walking, being in nature, being in silence. When there aren't all these things, like right now I'm asking you to bring Kyle forth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Summon Kyle. Bring Kyle to me. <laughs> the, the podcast guest is Kyle, so yeah. bring him to me. And the podcast host is Pete, so I'm mm. bringing him out. Do I sound depressed right now? Yeah. No, it's because I've dragged fucking Pete out. And here oh, we you, are. You turn it on. Turn it on. And that's fine. We're all turning it on. It's not a show business thing. Everybody's mm -hmm. turning it on to a certain extent. Yeah. Playing music, though, or camping, all these things that I think of with you, l fewer things are asking you to drag Kyle out. So you're learning. You're seeing what remains when everything is stripped away. I don't think I was successful in Hollywood in the way that some other people were because I wasn't good at 
dragging Turning down. it on. <laughs> it's so funny. But I laugh I, because you're I, so funny to me. I, I can't I, believe well, that. Well, I was terrible at auditions. Yeah. I hated auditions. I didn't. I moved here to be a stand-up. Yeah. And like, well, you got to do all this other stuff. Like, that was the big, like, even before pandemic, I was having the best time because I'm like, oh, I'm here to get credits to be a stand-up and tour and be a comedian. Mm. And once I did, like, do you want to do this audition in Santa Monica at 5 p.m.? Nope. Because I'm going to drive all the way over there. I'm going to get in the waiting room and see the guy who should get the job and be like, that guy's hilarious. Can't wait to see you on the show, buddy. I'm going to take off. <laughs> I guess I'm already stuck. I guess I'm an hour and a half away from my apartment that's only five miles away. <laughs> Do I have to get a hotel for the night? I'm on the other side of the 405. May as well be in Hong Kong at this point because it would take me just as long to get back. You go with no joke. Yeah. Should I get a hotel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, should I? Yeah, I will, I will fly six hours to a gig. We got. We, I got a show in Santa Monica. Good luck with that show. Good yes. luck with that show in Santa Monica. That's there's so... a whole there's all the groups of comedians that I've never met because oh, they're on yeah. the other side of the 405. It's like the Continental Divide. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole scene. Yeah, that whole Santa Monica Venice Beach crew that I've never met. <laughs> by the way, to bring this back to Portland, by the because people are like, I can't believe I'll do a show. It's mm -hmm. ten o'clock. Show's over. They go, You're going back now? Yeah. I'm like, Yeah, and when I go to the grocery store, it takes five mm -hmm. minutes. So it all evens out. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. drive for an hour and fifteen minutes, but it all evens yeah, out. Yeah. The, I, the time in the car is less. <laughs> yeah. Well that it's more and more people here they're like oh no i live in santa clarita mm. even moving back here i was like let's just go to long beach if i got two sets in a week fine i'll do that commute yeah but then the rest of my life will be that's exactly right nice that's and i say uh -huh. to people all the time if you like where you live there is no commute you're not like Ugh, you're yeah. just getting closer to where you want to be it feels great yeah my traveling's a bit more because i'm and you know in a corner of the country that i work in so yeah. every flight is at least connect yeah connecting in four and a half or five hours and it's not great but when i go home i'm oh. in a place that's peaceful that i've set up that yeah. i've you know you have land uh, chickens no chickens no i'm not home yeah I, w I wish I could have a pet or something. I'm just not home enough. Yeah. Because if I'm not there, I'm down here. But and do you like touring? Do you? I, I saw your calendar. It's very full. Yeah. And I, was I, like, I, I still I love it. doing stand up. And I wonder if I, I I am now starting to. Do I have to plan for the time where I might not like this or mm. my relevance, you know, isn't there anymore? And I'm not. It's it's still scarcity mentality. Mm. Like if you want me to play, I'm gonna play. I book my year out in January. Do they still want me? Give me the year worth of work. And I keep thinking, mm. like, that means next year I'm going to take some time off. But next year I'll sit down in January with my agent and book out a year. But I block out time and call it a midlife crisis, you know. Oh, yeah, things are sore after I do stuff. Your body's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Do as much as you can. Mm. Go hike, ride bikes, do all that stuff. Mm. And it's still not as much as I'd like to be doing. I like the idea of things more than I like executing them. Mm. Got a lot of backpacking gear. Went once. There's who we are and there's who we think we are. Uh, Isn't that? I, I'm, I'm a whole lot of who I think I am. Oh, God. I, sometimes I just had my physical and like when she's interviewing me, I'm like, who am I? I'm like, who am I pretending to be? Yeah. I catch myself and I correct myself, but I'll be like, that's a story. I don't do cardio five times a week. <laughs> like, yeah. what are we talking about? Well, and you know what? They're just just be honest. It's only good. And then I was honest, and I got fucking judged by your doctor. But, but in like not the I was my appendix was it didn't burst, but it was infected. It was a weird day. I was like I had like you know I'd done jokes about it, but like I had a pain. I'm like this isn't kylate dumb shit again pain this is something's wrong mm. and i went to the doctor and they're like okay well just we'll do some blood work and i got a call at like 9 30 at night from the doctor going your appendix is it's not bursting but it's about to go to the er oh wow but I'll go to the hospital but did your appendix did, call the doctor <laughs> <laughs> uh, look you gotta tell him <laughs> you misdiagnosed but i forgot because i went in that day i'm like this feels weird I, I, is this the appendix She's like, what well, do you do? Drugs or whatever. I'm like, I'm like, I'll just be honest. I'm like, I've recreationally taken like mushrooms and it hadn't been recently or anything. Why do you do that? Why do you think you need to do that? 
We're here because of the appendix pain. You're not going to do like, Whoa. so do you want me to be honest? And now I'm doing something that's almost I legal. That. And it's like, and, and you got judgy about it. Like, this is why people don't say shit. This is why AI is going to take over the doctor. Cause you can, I, we're going to be sliding a thing being like, how, how much sass do you want? I, why? <laughs> Zero. Yeah. Zero sass. No, yeah. Who's turning that one up? That's what gets me in shape is to be, <laughs> is to be shamed. Psilocybin is very neutral. Yeah. This but must it, be other But issues. also doctors, it's, I mean, I said the other day, it's like, but it's also like TSA. We're like, oh, you're one institution. Why is there different rules at each place? Why are five doctors going to tell me five different things about how to take care of myself? Mm. Well, that's not building a sense of uh, trustworthiness in this field. Yeah. If you all have different opinions. Why? My last doctor, not my current doctor, but was like still writing things down and putting them in folders. <laughs> like pen written folders. I, I don't I was mind like, that. I kind of like that. You're not going to like it when he retires and no one can find the folder. That's well, what happened. Why am I going to die? Well, because the transformer exploded. Oh, there you go. <laughs> because the new guy. <laughs> Clicked on the wrong link, You're and now our system see, blew up. In the new Blade Runner, they talk about a blackout, and they go, it's ironic that only paper survived. You're going to love the new Blade Runner. It's not like the old Blade Runner. You'll get through it. You're going to love it. Okay. I don't have to see the first one? No. Zero. Do you watch Dune? Do I have to watch Dune? No. Okay. You don't have to watch Dune. I just, I, I feel Sorry, bad. Sorry, everybody. Science fiction does... Nothing for you? It's like... Gay porn. I'm glad it's there for the people that enjoy it. It doesn't move my heart rate a single bit. <laughs> There's just nothing there for me. Can I just say, having known you all these years, when you started doing the bit about the robot that delivers the food, I felt like, you know, on The Simpsons, would they have a future episode? You know, yeah. Bart's got an earring. Yeah. I was with you in the lion's den watching the future episode of Kyle. <laughs> you're like, you're going to make it blink. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like really straddling two times. It was doesn't crazy. have dry eyes. It's a touchpad. <laughs> it was so, <laughs> and you look like you look. All right, we'll put it in the act. <laughs> I just came here to work. I think you stuff. have to put in, uh, <laughs> Just say who you want us to vote for. It doesn't come on during Yellowstone. Okay, I don't. That's I great. don't write down bits anymore, so I guess I just have to rewatch this podcast. That's the way to go. Bit. You can watch it on two X. It's a good go. riff. It's a good riff. I got a lot of bits out of Pete for me. A lot of good riffs. A lot of solid <laughs> riffs. Um, have you ever seen a ghost? <sighs> you seem like a guy who's no. seen a ghost with a lantern, maybe. I, no. <laughs> well, okay. You want to go into what's what's everything, and uh, we're all tasting our nature, or whatever. I think he tastes deeply enough of his true nature. He's got to suck his own dick face. Uh, <laughs> uh, the sides reason of the that same. rumor caught on is because Marilyn Manson has I suck my own dick face. And we didn't know that was a kind of face. <laughs> Pete, Pete removed some of his own ribs so he could taste his own nature. <laughs> uh, uh, that gives me chills. Oh, but it's so obvious we're awareness. Keep going. Do you, what I mean? Do you think there's what? What do you think we turn into after we die? What do you think happens? Do, does it turn into energy? Does the, does the synapse? Does the does the electricity powering our synapses? <laughs> energy can't be destroyed. destroyed or created. I think that's close. I, I I again, or it feeds the worm. The worm dies. The organism like it, it's in perpetual motion that way. I think time uh, doesn't exist, and it's all a lot of gurus. You climb the mountain, you say, "What is reality?" They go like this. So it all yeah. the idea of Pete entering into reality, existing for a time, and then dying out of it mm -hmm. is an illusion. It has a relative reality, yeah, but it's not actually what's happening. Uh, this is a cliche, but this is the only moment. So when you die, your consciousness unravels, kind of like a tornado of water underwater mm -hmm. ceases and goes back into yeah, the water the same as when you before you were born exactly mm -hmm. which was also not what it seemed to be yeah um but depending on what you identify with if you're they say it's like a vase and you break it and the air that was in the vase goes into the air outside the vase that's what i think happens when you die okay which is a fancy way of saying nothing 
It's a it really is. <laughs> it's a different. It's a different kind of nothing, though. It's not the sad uh, nothing. It's the you go into the it's the true nothing. Nothing. The true nothing. Nothing the awareness is either happy the, or sad. The awareness that knows no object, so it doesn't mm. even know anything. It's full only of itself. So that's what I, I think happens when you die. Oh, it's full of itself, all right. <laughs> oh, we're, we're full of ourselves, all right. That's for sure. Oh, you can give it to me, Kyle. I actually love it. You don't have to include yourself in that. You can say I'm full of it. I love it. I really do. And uh, let's see me on my, I have a joke about me on my deathbed going, it should be you, like having a very <laughs> unchilled death. But that is, oh, that is what I think. unchilled death. The unchilled death. Oh, no. Yeah. Can I tell you, I laughed real hard at your bit about being afraid of watching porn, not because of, like, because of being scared of what you'll like. And yes. it's like helped my concept of pornography and my really? consumption of it. Yeah. Oh, the, the big line was, this yeah, is me yeah. now. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. And then Val, it's a good wife, uh, a yeah. good comedy wife. She'll sometimes say in conversation, this is me now. She'll say it very calmly. She's like, you're a little worried this is me now? And I'm like, yeah. yes, yes that, I'm worried this that, is me now. I was trying to address it like how the time, like I, I'm still, if I look at porn and I'm just like, I'm just looking at my old meat and potatoes regular stuff with the sidebars like, you want to see the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> Fuck Marge Simpson. Like, no, who's this for? What are your What's great bits? wrong with you people? When you delete the cache and then you go to CNN.com. Do you remember that bit of yours? No. I don't remember any of my bits. It's a great bit. Yeah. I relate so hard. It was like, because well, I've been Tell it to there. me. I would like... It's like, you I know when you look at porn... I, I'm not going to do it as well, but it's like, you know when you look at porn... <laughs> And uh, oh, and then you immediately like, become afraid that people are going to find your laptop and see what you had been looking at. Yeah. So you delete the history, and then you're like, but it can't be blank. Yeah, try and fill it up with, like, I was just studying. I was trying to research. You go to CNN! But the reason I died laughing was because mine was CNN.com. Yeah. Mine was always CNN.com. Yeah. I was just clearly brushing up. Well, uh, Kyle did nothing on the internet the whole week. <laughs> and then Tuesday at 7 p.m., he went to CNN.com. He was a real news We now. just found him dead in these hard sweatpants. There was jizz everywhere, <laughs> yeah. but he loved After the After reading news. about the conflict in Eastern Africa. <laughs> nothing got Kyle going like the conflict in East Africa. He was so Apparently. He was so upset. Dude, I just related so hard to that. Anyway, you were saying this is your ghost story. Oh no, I think I think I just wanted to experience something like that for so long and then I you know got you know like like the anything when the internet gives you all the information about something that as a kid you just read a couple books from the library on yeah. there was still mystery around things. Yeah. And again, more bits of yours of just like yeah. you just didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Tom Petty from? You know? <laughs> and it's all flooded in. Yeah, and it's oh, this stuff it's just not that it's just not it's just not. Yeah. And it's a bummer. Yeah, I wish nice. I wish I didn't I'm not one of those fans that knows everything about something and I my maybe that makes me fair weather on so many things. Maybe I'm just too much of a dilettante about everything like, mm. "Oh yeah, I like this type of music. Oh, did you like it when like in this album you could hear this blip because it was actually could you hear Paul say fuck in Hey Jude cuz he was angry like Is that real? <sighs> Yeah, there's, but only because I'm sitting there wasting time on a shitter looking at Reddit going, this is, in, again, this is information now I can share. Yeah. But I don't, I'm, yeah. I didn't care enough to be a We're fan. We're stockpiling information. Yeah, for and so all the ghost stuff, coming. like here's mo here's proof, anytime it's like proof, it's like this is the least compelling stuff. Yeah. And any stuff that was entertaining, whimsical entertainment is not anymore. Yeah. There's no whimsy to anything. There's no, there's... You could only take it the most. All the conspiracy stuff got ruined, got absolutely destroyed yeah. in the last few years. Believe it or not, you and I are both old Political enough movements. to know that there was a time when conspiracy theories were just kind of fun. It was just kind of interesting. Yeah. And now it's like, yeah, they weren't. You can listen to this podcast. We weren't it's been electing, on long enough that we were like, electing presidents based on right. them. We used to go an hour, two hour long conversation just having fun with a conspiracy theory, and, and it became like a dangerous thing. Yeah. Well, and again, look, thinking the internet's real. Yeah. Whoops. Whoops. I thought the internet was real. But what? What are we not letting people find out and fulfilling their lives enough to where like that's it? Yeah. They are just 
working and not like they're not making enough money to recreate and go out. It's so easy to say, oh, just take a walk, go into nature. What some yeah. what nature? Some people don't live around right. anything compelling. The the and they'll just read the internet, and I'm guilty yeah. of it too. Yeah. That's it. That's what you're yeah. consuming. That's shaping your worldview. The yeah, whimsical right. fun things, the it's time a... life was the moon landing fake, was like, like you actually bought this book from the infomers? Like, yeah, right. can you believe this horse shit? Yeah. Right. But you're yeah. right. It's a symptom. It's the beginning of the movie Vice. Did you see the movie Vice? It's just like, how did we get to this place where we're electing people like Dick Cheney? Uh, that, that's sort oh, of yeah, yeah. He's like, we're overworked. We're working in these things. We have no time. We have no money. Yeah. So when you have free time, you're not researching candidates. What? What? Like no. as much as you might have in the past, but you're right. In the same way, you're overworked, underpaid, and you work in a place where it's it's yeah. not beautiful. I bought a product based on the commercial. Right, right. I didn't go to consumer affairs over this one. Who believed consumer affairs is owned by the corporation? Like, Which, by the way, okay. is just another kind of graffiti. It's like if you look at impoverished communities in graffiti, mm -hmm. it's like this way of being like, "Well, I own this," and and like having that opinion is like, "Well, I have this strong opinion. I'm going to write my opinion big and loud." Yeah. And writing on Reddit or writing on Facebook is a, is another kind of graffiti. It's like, "I exist. I'm here. You'll take me seriously." You have such little control. Somebody said that about like, let me see, like. Uh like a petulant teen or something. Somebody that's like going to walk into traffic knowing you're going to stop. Mm. And you're like, look at this ass main character syndrome. And somebody else is like, that person has no control anywhere else in life. Mm. And this is how they feel they have control. This is why TSA is, I don't think anybody that works at TSA is doing great elsewhere. It's a job and mm. it's, it, it, yeah, it's, it's security theater. And it's also a job, and for the most part, we all do the dance, and they're fine. I'm not going to give them unnecessary attitude. But I've had instances where they could tell that they're in control, mm. and you could tell you don't have it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. so you know you can make somebody's life difficult, yeah. and that's your one little feeling. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, attribute that to the, the, the certain police. I like, know. Like, your life's a mess. This is where you, it's a bully. It's a bully thing. Right. It is. And it's me being an asshole to my friend last night because I was feeling sad. Yeah. So we can relate. What happened to you at the TSA? You're making me remember I was going, I pre-check and I'm going through the metal detector mm -hmm. and they're like, empty your pockets. And I was like, it's a metal detector. Yeah. He's like, empty your pockets. Like he, he got like military That's, voice. And I was yeah. like, you know, guys that fly a lot like us. I'm yeah. like, I, I all I said was, I've never had to do that before. And he goes, well, you're doing it today. And I was yeah. like, okay. Yeah. All right, Val. Yeah. Well, I mean, I always leave the non-metal stuff in my pockets because that's my control over their control. Yeah. I've got chapstick. Who cares? Chapstick. But I'm like, no, I didn't take it out. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> I wanted. I think. Yeah. I. You would've. think you're the boss? I'm the boss. When in reality, nobody's the boss. <laughs> See the game. The game we're playing. How about this? You ever almost die? You seem like a guy who's almost died a few I'm times. I'm about to get a UTI right now. What do you mean? I got a piss oh, from holding so it? bad. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't. I, I felt bad. I don't no, want to go pee pee. Pause it. Can I? I yeah. I'm sorry right to ruin it. the flow. I want to pee twice. I do that. I, like I packed it up, like, and just had to go pee again. That's how much pee I had. You I had this. I had this whole coffee. Again. I had your gypsy juice, <laughs> and then I had coconut water. Yeah, yeah. You're I loaded. Am, I have never been more hydrated in my life. You're loaded up. Like, I, <laughs> I, somebody told me you and I both have a bit about when you pee and then you walk away and then more pee comes out. Oh yeah. Did somebody tell you that? I, I have. I just. I didn't know you had a bit about it. Yeah, it's, it's when my special came out, so it already said and done, but they were like, oh, Kyle has a bit about that. I don't think anybody was saying. Was I stole it special? It. No. Netflix. I, I don't believe in the I know, me theft. Who cares? So the, Unless you, it's you like, just had one a couple. Yeah, a couple months ago, the Netflix one. Okay. Yeah. But it was like, I can tell I'm getting older because when I was 22, I pee and walk away. Now I pee, walk away, and like just more pee comes out. And, yeah. I, and I liken it to a hidden track on a Dave Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> my, mine is about how like I. I I it I think it's like keeping me. It's like a, the universe keeping me humble because I'm so judgmental. But oh then yeah, I, you but just then I your always pants. have some pee in my pants. So That's I'm, gonna great. Like, I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong. I'm like, hey, 
Really? You want to say that? You got a half dollar wet spot keeping your dick cold all for the next hour and a half? <laughs> like, okay. Like, really, we all should just be combining <laughs> into one super comedian because those bits that's, together. That's your AI. That is our AI. It's He could do four <laughs> hours on that premise. <laughs> have, have, have you had anybody like now you see it like I just put an AI write a Kyle Kinane bit and uh-huh. I've read it and I'd be like not that far off oh really it's not funny yeah but it's upsetting whenever I do it uh, it's always like incredibly positive because I have done it when it, it was kind of when yeah. it first came out right a Pete on the show and it's like yeah who's ready to have fun I'm happy <laughs> and I'm like all right. It's like when somebody does an impersonation page. of yourself too. You're like, I don't sound like that. And then you look look at your stuff, you're like, God damn I did it. Steph Tolev's show last night. I'm like, are we just impersonating each other to each other? <laughs> Very good. I don't know. What do you sound like? I don't sound like that. You sound like this. I'm like, all right, yeah, I guess. <laughs> your rumor going around. We are all one. Chicago. <laughs> ah, there <laughs> yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, we're almost out of time. So I'm gonna jump to the last question, which is can you tell me okay. the time in your life you laughed? Harder than you've ever laughed. Uh, maybe you're crying. Maybe oh. you're a kid. Maybe someone farted. Maybe someone fell down. It's always a fart, isn't it? I don't. You know, I don't. <laughs> it's always I, a fart. It's always gonna get me. Uh, that's another Matt Bronger thing. Nothing. Nothing will be funnier than a man falling downstairs while he can't stop farting. <laughs> 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 like, like yeah just the idea of it like yeah, yeah that's the funniest thing i can think of yeah that is so good i can't i don't have specific moments i mean a lot of them can be attributed to like uh you know substances or yeah, what have yeah. you maybe assisted laughter but there it was a few weeks ago i was back down here and i don't rachel and i were just we were at i, I wanted to buy a silly outfit to do after midnight and uh-huh. so we're at the we were at the Americana, at Brand. We're at the mall, and then we just went to go eat at the BJ's brew house across, which is so gross in there. Like everything was just off, and we couldn't <laughs> stop laughing at how everything was bad. But we're just there, and we're like, and she's like, "Ooh, they have a pizuki." I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" She's like, "It's a pizza, but or it's a cookie, but it's a shape." I'm like, "So it's a pizza uki." And then we're just asking them, we're like, "How do you pronounce this?" He's like, "Man, I don't know." Oh and no! We just collectively Pazuki laughter. Yeah, we just. I'm like, it sounds like we're being racist to Asians somehow, <laughs> <laughs> and we just couldn't stop laughing the whole night, and. Neither of us were drunk. We're just at a sticky floored bad mm. restaurant yes. by the mall. That's it. Having the I'm like, is it it's the full moon? Maybe that's it. But it was just consistently it was one of those things where everything you're just raw, yes, but comedically raw, and everything that happened around us just kept adding to how <laughs> yes. much how bad the food was, how ridiculous everything around us was yes. going, other people's conversations. And it just it just, you just felt had an good off moment, but yeah. in the right way. It was an on moment. I it thought was it was, yeah, on. it was just like everything came together to just be like yeah. silly. Yeah. And I think that as far as recent memory. That's great. Yeah. I love that. That speaks to your relationship too. It made me think of yeah. last night, Lila said, I want another fish. We have mm-hmm. a goldfish. Lila's never fed this fish. <laughs> and I'm just sitting at the table and Val goes, Lila, we'll get you another mm-hmm. fish if you feed this fish. Every day, twice a day, <laughs> and then she said for two months. <laughs> and I'm, I lo- like, she didn't even yeah. say it to be funny. <laughs> and I was like, that was so <laughs> hardcore. Like two months. Like there's no chance. It's just another thing where it's like this is funny in our relationship. Yeah, I died laughing at how I was like, that's like, Wah! like that was the most. <laughs> gangster that <laughs> two months <laughs> also then you can kill it yeah that's like, right. also what happens after two months <laughs> it's not even gonna live through the experiment <laughs> this is this is just a prison sentence this isn't like that's, learn a lesson that's what i said i said just say you're not getting a fish <laughs> just say you you can't have one don't say don't give her an impossible task <laughs> but boy it felt so good to laugh Kyle, we have to go. Uh, thank you so much. The special is called Dirt it. Nap, and it, you can watch on. Is it on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Okay. Or buy it for ten bucks. I, I love when people are like, "I can't handle all these ads." 
then buy it. Yeah, buy it. It's Ten bucks. Yeah. To Ten pay bucks. for you, pay for you. YouTube's better than half the streaming shit you got, anyways. I was gonna say, I got that preem. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it ad free. One more, one more great Paul Danke's joke about like I understand that you have to advertise, but maybe not before the child CPR video I'm trying to look at. That's one of, that's one of my bits. <laughs> Is it? Okay. I, I did a joke about how there were two ads and a 10 minute intro before the the how to stop a baby from choking video. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, oh my gosh, oh. Oh, that's crazy. All bits are all bits. All bits we are all, all bits. Them. You get some modern. You have enough hair to enjoy my favorite shampoo. It's Modern Mammals if you want it. <laughs> you give me shampoo. Here you go. Now I'm insulted. Take it and use it. I do now that I have this much. Well, you'll like it because you like it to look. I'm kind of nice. Listen, like, it's either Wayne like Grow or it's yeah Nick Cage in in uh, Con Air. Yeah, <laughs> this will get you there, and uh, that's it. Thank you so much for doing it, man. Thanks, Would buddy. you say keep it crispy? It's your second time saying keep it crispy in ten years. Up in Ojai. That's right. Keep it crispy up in that high desert. <laughs> A little too dry up there. A little too dry. Come on, Mac, Mark. Keep Come it crispy, on. but remember to moisturize. Okay, you keep adding. Yeah, why, stuff. why aren't you? Spo- yeah, why aren't you sponsored by moisturizer? I can't add stuff. It has to be you, you individual. Can... Oh, you can add stuff. I just did. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Keep it crispy. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I forgot to read it. <laughs> Sorry, real quick. I got to uh, thank you for rating and reviewing the show. We've been doing a show, Kyle, for over 10 years, but we've never tried to grow it. Well, keep it crispy. Well, we're growing it. Keep it crispy. He keeps crisping. Crisp it up. Lily Kugel said uh, five stars, one of my favorite podcasts. I'm a fan of everything Pete Holmes does, uh, from his uh, crashing to his, but his podcast is probably my favorite content from old PD. I love the way he connects with guests. Keep it crispy. He's a really great interviewer. Keep it crispy. <laughs> don't don't take that into question. I thought you were going <laughs> to critique it. <laughs> the episodes he does with his wife, Val, We Made It Weird, brings me unbridled joy. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and the We Made It Weird every Friday are in my top three. Thanks, Pete and Val. So thank you to you, Lily Kugel. Guys, please rate and review the show. We're trying to build. In the meantime, maybe text this episode to a friend. That's it. Now, Kyle, do your final one. <laughs> Can I get some help? <laughs> hey, keep it crispy. <laughs> you made it weird. You made it weird. <laughs>